grab all your microphones. Good. Calling to order the September 15th meeting of the Historic Resources Commission here in room 111 North Front Street, room 204. Uh, the time is now currently 4.03 p.m. The next business meeting will be Thursday, October 6, 2022 at noon, and the next hearing Thursday, October 20th, 2022, 4 p.m., both here in room 204, 111 North Front Street. Honey, if you could raise your right hand. When you have a moment. It's just a moment. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do, Connie Corbett. Thank you. If uh, I could have us look at the staff approvals. We're going to do these individually. Yeah. We can. I make a motion to enter those into the permanent record. Okay. Is there? There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstention. Motion passes. Moving on to the approval of the minutes for the last meeting, August 18th, 2022. <laughs> make a motion to approve. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Having a motion and a second, is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Meeting minutes approved. On to certificates of appropriateness for this evening and moving on to staff recommendations. Connie. Okay. Um, this was discussed briefly at the business meeting. We didn't have a quorum to pass it uh, due to staff approval, um, but uh, the materials, design, and details for the proposed new garage are consistent with the guidelines and with previous approvals. A single overhead garage door design with the appearance of two doors is appropriate in this particular location based on an existing building that is located directly across the alley, uh, resulting in a reduced turn in radius. Um, a south elevation rendering and a product cut sheet from the overhead door were submitted after the business meeting. Great. Funny, real quick, just because I think we might have missed this uh, in the order here. Um, introduction of commissioners present oh, that's right. and public forum. So starting on my left. Mm -hmm. Mega Sinha. Joseph McCabe. Stuart Gibbony. Speaker Baba. Michael Fork. Wonderful. Thank you. And Connie, was there any items for public forum? No public forum. No public forum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good evening. Okay, moving back to on to this case. Sorry for the going out of order there. Make a motion to allow this to be provided to staff for final review. Review and approval. Put it second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Agenda item number two. 139 West Main Street. Mm -hmm. So they're just swapping and we're moving so much. This is also staff recommended uh, application for new signage at the Old State Arsenal. Um, the information I think is fairly clear about uh, it's a good application. what's there and what's to be replaced. Uh, the signs that they're going to put up are actually more appropriate than the ones that are there. Um, and I recommend approval. Yes. I make a motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All any further discussion? Any clarifications required by staff? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Looking forward to making improvements. Right. Sorry, you had to come. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah. 
On to uh, case number three, looks to be a continued application. Yes, continue with the motion to continue. Okay, is there a motion to continue case number three? So moved. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed, abstentions? Motion passes, okay. continued on to case number four. 427 click the map. Is it watching the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> if you could raise your right hand. Sure. Do you swear to tell the truth and the testimony for the commission this evening? I do. If you could state your full name and association with the property for record. Sure, I, I'm Peter Ketter with Sandvik Architects. We're the architect of record. Great, thank you, Connie. Mm -hmm. uh, this proposed demolition is part of an ongoing rehabilitation of the historic Ford Motor Company branch assembly plant and surrounding buildings. Uh, reinstating historic window openings was approved in March 2021. Rezoning from manufacturing to apartment residential was recommended uh, September 2021. April 2021 comments for the conceptual review of the overall project included, uh, this is a great project, good for the area and preservation in general. The new construction is complementary and nothing of significance appears to be supposed to be removed from the site. And that's what they're requesting tonight. Um, September business meeting comments included. Uh, the additions are 40 plus years old, so should be documented on the interior as well as exterior uh, prior to demolition. And we've discussed that um, since the business meeting. Uh, recommend approval of the application with the following stipulations, uh, general interior and exterior photo documentation and measurements of the existing additions proposed for demolition to be submitted to HPO staff prior to issuance of a certificate of appropriateness. I'll ask if there's any comments of the applicant. Just to be no, uh, I mean, this is, you know, this is just some very preliminary site demolition. So they're getting ready to start, uh, you know, underground utility work, site work. So they're just kind of clearing things out. These are all, you know, it's a couple cinder block additions from the 1980s, uh, loading docks, and then just kind of random equipment platforms and just kind of cleaning up the paving and the site. Nothing historic is going to be affected. Um, we're hoping to be back next month with like the full rehab proposal. We're very close on that. So, uh, that's, uh, that's coming. Any, any issue with potentially the conditions, uh, recommended by staff or as discussed regarding additional photo documents? I, I mean, we have plenty of photos. You see the plans. I mean, it's been measured and, and documented. Uh, I, you know, I. I don't know what level of documentation. Um, I think just some supplemental, just some supplemental interior photos, a general. That's fine. Space photos, I think, would be minimal. I think it was all. Yeah, it's, it's very plain open space. That's just something to it. Fine. Understood. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And this would be with the um, with just uh, uh, just clarifying. This would be that the applicant would provide some additional follow-up information to the staff. But otherwise, there's no objections here. So, and okay. Connie, just like a PDF with photos. Yeah, and, you know, we're talking about looking for you know apps. Yep. Thing like that. Just okay. single document. You know, maybe a paragraph of description. With sure. Thing, you know, two photographs. I would say. Got it. Great, no problem. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks. Case number 5, 580 East Rich Street. He's not here yet. Are you here for 580? No. <laughs> um, number six, actually, is, is, wasn't ready after all. She didn't get the drawings in, so she was requested to be continued to October. We can have a motion for that. Great. So, second. Hearing a motion and a second to continue. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Case continued. We'll come back to number five. Moving on to number seven. 526, 532 East Bridge Street. You could raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth before the commission this evening? Yes. And if you could state your full name and association with the property for record. Uh, Philip Heron, H.E. for RDN, uh, architect. Wonderful. Thank you. 
Got it. I'm going to ask to see this before okay. we give my staff report because the department is meeting with you. So this is different than I just thought about. I thought there was going to be a screw in each one. That's what the drawing was called. Oh, that's like screw. It'd be on the uh, property side. Um, so this is uh, to revise the approved effort of Ron and Fence um, that was previously approved in 2021. Applicant is proposing an aluminum fence in lieu of the raw iron. There's a change in design, <clears throat> installation of a new 42-inch high raw iron fence with stone, you know, yeah, stone piers along the street front edge of the two houses was approved in 2021. The majority of front yard fencing along the street appears to be historic raw iron. And I went out and took a few photos kind of at the end just to show um, while, the, while the iron fences are welded, the aluminum fence is assembled with fasteners in each picket. Uh, the standards for site improvements state that A, site improvements should be compatible to the subject building as well as to the adjacent contributing properties, open spaces, and the overall environment, and B, uh, fences of wrought iron, stone, or wood are encouraged. The new fence would be located along the street in front of two historic houses. The visual appearance of the proposed aluminum fence with numerous fasteners is not compatible with majority of fencing material on the street or the overall character of the streetscape. Recommended the application be continued to explore other aluminum fencing options that may have a more historic appearance in regard to method of assembly or recommend denial. And my point is that all of the fences that are here, even the, even the new one that was approved several years ago, uh, you know, these has horizontal members with the uh, the verticals going through the center, and they're not they're not fastened. Uh, that's, that's my biggest issue. This, this is actually a uh, kind of going to ask the applicant here um, before I ask you to add whatever you'd like. The fasteners on the sample are facing the back side only. Yes, you can. So it'd be fastened this way. This would be presented to the street. And you just want to walk through the change in the fence, et cetera, for the commission? Um, it's stylistically, it changes. Um, I guess, you know, pretty significant. Before it was, there was an arched kind of uh, aesthetic. This is more of a straight picket aesthetic with the finials. Um, the uh, so you know it, it's 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 purely just the fence the the, uh, the gates being being eliminated the castles that were originally designed um, and just just a simplification of the fence um, there was also uh, the elimination of the stone piers. Um, the owner has indicated that they would be willing to you know, uh, add the stone piers back in uh, with the approval of this, uh, this fencing. This is an aluminum fence. Um, it has a um, 2605 AMA powder coated finish on it, which is a very you know, high grade finish. Um, so it should perform uh, for long duration. Uh, I would I would also note that the uh, the property two houses down um, was approved with a fence. Um, it is a four foot high fence, um, so which is a little bit out of character with the neighborhood. But it was approved. You know, with this fence, we're getting this custom done to be at the forty two inch to meet the um, kind of standard fence height along the street, trying to match. Um, really kind of the the uh, historic character from the height standpoint and that was one of the things that we had uh, originally you know discussed uh, with the prior uh, wrought iron uh, solution instead of being at a 48 inch height being at a, a uh, 42 inch height and that's what this is so I think mean, this that's yeah, this is the newer one he's talking about and I, I'm, I'm not sure why they proved why whoever was here at the time proved this tall fence, but it still is, you know, 
constructed more like um, another thing that I just have sort of a, somewhat of an issue is that, you know, there's no gaps here. There's no gaps here, but there's a, a gap around the top mm. here, too. But, Connie, is that the aluminum fence that we're referencing? Right this here? one, I'm not sure. I, I, I looked at the file, I couldn't find details of it. Um, but I think it's, I think it's steel. Sort of touching it as, you know, but I'm, I'm not positive. How, how, how did the architects do them? Well, the appearance and precedent, I guess, that we're setting is what I'm really considering right now. But what's the the uh, move to this fence? Is it related to cost? Is that the, the major driver? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I worry about. There is a significant aesthetic difference between the the wrought iron and the fencing that's typically approved and recommended versus this, the the fasteners, the gaps, the way it's going to weather. Um, I'd be concerned about setting precedent for future fences as well if we would go this route. So for the non-architects, can we understand how this would weather? Like what? I mean, aesthetically, I, I, I don't mind it looks like, I think it, from my eyes, it would fit. Also like that it's not one height, it is a little kind of character to it. But what, is, what does this mean to, uh, over time, what does this do? So it is a powder coated finish on the aluminum. And so the uh, American Architectural Manufacturers Association, or AMA, has three grades of finishes. There's a 2603 to a 2605. This is a 2605, which is the highest grade finish that you get for a loan. So it has, you know, kind of outstanding weather performance uh, characteristics with regards to, you know, testing and sun belt areas. So, you know, you don't get fade, you don't get chalky, you don't have you know, kind of those kind of issues that stay with this. What about uh, salt and the curve? That, that, that would, that finish helps protect against those, you know, those kind of corrosive uh, elements. So, and when you say protect, sorry, Lauren here, is it 10 years, five years, 20 years? Um, and then you go back and paint it? Like, what do you do with the time? I mean, it could go back and be repainted, yes. You know, at, at, if, if, you know, if the finish fails and it's bad, you know, again, it's a, you know, it's a warranty condition. I can't remember exactly what the. <laughs> Um, a warranty is on that 2605 finish. Um, the highest I'm familiar with from past experience is 20 to 30 years. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, I can't voice right. that for certain. But it, it is a pretty decent. <laughs> now how, how would that compare with the broad iron, which we, I'm, I'm assuming we're comparing that with this with that, right? It's a world of difference. It, it's a world of difference, but. Yeah. I don't know, I also feel like this is this is a it's not like there's a current fence being replaced. So I come down to modern products for a historic district and are we still compatible? And generally I don't have heartburn over a rhythm of posts or pickets or little things like that. It's it's not there. Um I do wish we could maybe gain the newel post detail back and the 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 corner or limestone pier parts back. I think that the two most significant things I always think about when I think about the e tough older homes and structures, if you go to page eight of the file there, is just those <clears throat> and, and, uh, yeah, so scroll right in there, you know, it's it's these two elements that I think are the most signature items. I mean the original new new fence still had an interval of mm -hmm. a post that looks very much like that. The only real difference is between here and here. And I can kind of get over that. It's this character defining sort of feature of the, the stone pier that's over here, right there, that's out of the corners, for the, the kind of character driven items that kind of get added. But then again, I can live with a little more simplicity. So in this case, um, that gate condition would be what? Just that. It, it, would, it would have the two by two posts with the gate, and so it would it would have um, you know more of a continuous look versus having you know the the 
I believe what they yeah. call them are uh, castles to on at the at the gate rules. Um, again, you know, the owner was you know amenable to you know bringing back and doing the limestone piers at the very corners of the property, and you know that pier then the the easternmost pier would sort of mimic the uh, historic pier that's across the driveway here that's there and you know, kind of reintroduce that pier. kind of framing of the drive um, so that would be a possible consistency so is there an option to, if we get this material to introduce the elements at the gate which is which is a little bit more to your point they, they again that's not something that's offered by the manufacturer of this this gate so could, could you do the piers also at the gate entrance area do you think to have four more of those might make it a little more we need a more heft is where i'm getting at i think that the scale for me i'm looking at the scale of that that massing against those buildings if you click up one one sheet from that you know i just look at that and that's not much of a gate now compared to what you had proposed originally so it's just there is a well that's actually not the gate um if you uh i'm not sure how that got included in there um so it's good to take the six again so it's it's on that that sheet the next sheet up yeah so those are the gates but that's the gate so not yeah. really the arch top thing. yeah not the arch top gates so. Yeah, that doesn't match the panel. Did you get a did you get an answer? No. Okay. So only only willing to introduce the stone piers at this point at the corners. Yeah, that's kind of where the owner is right now. And you know, I it, you know if if the commission's looking to have more, I'd have to, you know, go back to the owner and see, you know, where they, you know, what they would consider in addition. I'm thinking about the length of it. I think it's a good point. Like I'm breaking it in scale at this point, whether it be if it's something more pronounced or kind of a stone clear suggestion, it's a good one. If it were a, like the length was a little bit less, then maybe it's not we can get away, but I can see that with the length, you need a break. <laughs> Would you like us to continue that so you could check, or do you want us to go ahead and consider that? Um, you know, again, I think you probably will have to have the table before, you know, if, if, you know, if the commission feels that, you know, there's some additional detail other than just the corner posts being added into the scheme, then, then I would need to go back to the other and see, you know, what the thoughts are with regards to that. Okay. I think it would help with the massing and the scale, frankly. Can, can we look at Google Street View to look at the building that's right next door? The joys of modern technology that you didn't have mm -hmm. <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, really, it does help quite a bit, yes. You can be everywhere. Just, I think, well, even even right there, zoom in on that, like, see that, that's the thing is like, there's a stone pier here, but then pan to the right there. I mean, even this gate has an accentuation at the entry point. I think that's where, if there was just something we could come up with that has an accentuation, I think that's where the, the hang up is. I don't, I'm not hearing any objections to the actual fence section, the typical fence section would also be in agreement with that. As long as the finials were maybe toned down, but you know. We're okay with the material too, right? Yeah, that's what I, I think. Saying. Yeah, I think we're we're kind of we're there on aspects a, of this. I think there's yeah. a lot of flexibility on that perspective. If you can meet us halfway with some stone piers, so why don't we continue this? Or, or even I don't even have to say stone. I mean, like for example, this this has stone on the ends, but then in the middle, it just it does something. You know, it. it I think it helps to break up accentuates the end. to build a rhythm yeah. within the, the fencing itself. And so if, yeah. if, even if there's a slight modification that can be made to the fencing to add and accentuate where those entrances are to the main entryways. Okay. Well, I'll take it back to the owner and take it back to the manufacturer and see what we can do to, to meet your uh, uh, concerns and uh, address these issues. So. I mean, I think for 
good 85 to 90 percent of the fence, you're getting what you want. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking you to revisit the gates. Not a problem. All right. Make a motion to continue. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Number five. Moving um, on to case number five, 580 East Rich Street. How are Good. you? Good. How are you good? Good. You Welcome. Could, Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony for the commission this evening? I certainly do. And my name is Carrick Sherrill. And you are associated with the property now. Uh, I'm the architect. Wonderful. Thank you. Honey. Um, so this is a couple parts to this. To uh, modify north elevation fenestration of building A. Reduce the number of windows from three to two on the second floor of the north and south elevations. North and south, and which are basically eliminating the center windows, and then also landscape hardscape. This is more based on uh, downtown commission's comments when they reviewed the project. Um, so this would include some asphalt parking on the alley, uh, concrete aprons at all garage entrances, uh, on pavers and driving aisles, parking spaces. Right. Those colors would be rusted red and Sierra. And turf stone, natural lattice work design, uh, private rule planting pavers filled with soil and grass, installing planting beds, shrubs, and ornamental trees and shade trees. Uh, the construction of uh, two new buildings was approved July 21, 2022, with landscape hardscape to return for commission review. The application also includes the elimination of two windows, as I noted, on the second floor of the North South elevations of Building A. Uh, the removal of the two windows does not affect the overall design or symmetry. Proposed landscape hardscape plan includes a mix of concrete asphalt on the alley only and permeable papers, as well as plantings that are consistent with the character of the neighborhood. Uh, this project, as I noted, was also will also be reviewed again by the downtown commission. Recommend approval of the application with any required modifications and the final drawings to be submitted to HBO staff for final mm -hmm. review and Connie, I'm going to need you to with the applicant here as they add any detail. Can you explain to us exactly what has changed since the last approval? Because without clouded drawings, we struggle. Um, can I, I just explain? Yes, you may even uh, approach the screen if needed. Okay. You can also because that's sometimes easier. Okay. Uh, if you go to the next, page, uh, I eliminate four windows. One, two, three, and four. Got it. Then I included a hardscape plan, um, primarily the request of the downtown commission. Yeah. Um, that includes some um, uh, pervious <coughs> sections, um, and then uh, provides more of a courtyard feel in between the buildings. That was the kind of their request. Um, yeah, the next page would be the better page to look at. Here we go. Could you go to the very last page? I just, I included the, the previous one. Okay, you did it. Okay. Uh, what, what I would just ask for file clarification purposes is if, if any <laughs> approval or condition on approval, it's just that it's yeah. very clear in your file, kind of a cloud and growing. Yeah. I just, I included the previous. I, I, Sometimes I add things and then I forget to read No, uh, just to the where you have the concrete or the asphalt parking. Mm -hmm. uh, is that also asphalt parking on the opposite side pasture? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, on the opposite side of the alley. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just to make. If you're taking and have going through kind of the trouble of um, placing uh, permeable uh, surfaces, then also maybe have that as an addition to that instead of asphalt. But if it's standard in the alley as um, we see now, then that's fine by me. I'm looking for a photo to confirm that. 
It's a little fuzzy in the overhead, but I believe that that is asphalt on the other side of the <laughs> apron. Um, it's a fairly old parking lot. Uh, and then the next parcel down is definitely asphalt. Uh, and then two parcels over is my eye doctor, and that's asphalt. That's <laughs> <laughs> just great. I mean, the commission has started to try to move towards using less concrete and asphalt in favors, whether it's on the alley or not. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. So, is that something you'd like to move on? Well, I mean, if it's an option to look into it, I would I would suggest suggest it, but uh, it's nothing that I'm yeah. too terribly concerned about at this time. I make a motion. Sure. Okay. I make a motion to approve uh, case number five HR twenty two oh nine oh one five. There's a motion to approve. Sure. Is there, there is a second? There's a second. There's a second. Any further discussion? Do you want to also caveat the motion with the condition that the applicant could further explore additional non asphalt services to be approved and reviewed by staff? Sure. <laughs> if, if the applicant so chooses. Yeah, so it's a suggestion. Right, sure. But you Understood as a suggestion. Yeah, and if you do, then you can go work directly with staff. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next time I will plow my chain. Thank <laughs> you. It's not just you. Yeah. <laughs> nice drawing uh, the elevation. Thank you. Uh, moving on to case number 895 Hamilton Avenue. That's wonderful. Hi. Violet Winovich. If you could raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony for the commission this evening? Yes. And if you state your full name and association with the property for record. Milo Winovich, I'm the owner. Okay, wonderful. If you could have a seat, and then there's a microphone there that you'll be sure to be close to. Awesome. Thank you. Connie. Okay. Uh, this is to install one 10 by 12 wooden and metal roof gazebo and one uh, new 5 by 7 wooden and metal roof gazebo. Side improvements were made prior to review and approval, including replacement of front and rear sidewalk, replacing a rear wooden deck with concrete steps, and replacement of concrete paver patio with a new concrete patio. Staff has reviewed and staff approved the completed work as being like for like and or as work that meets the guidelines. The proposed two new, new gazebos are to shelter a hot tub and outdoor cooking equipment. HPO staff has discussed the application of building and zoning staff and a building for the and zoning reviews will be required. Recommend continuing the application to allow time for preliminary uh, zoning review is completed. It's basically because Doesn't they might have other comments about what could be allowed and what could not be allowed. Or the commission can approve it and then if it goes through zoning review and they have <clears throat> other comments, the applicant might have to come back to the commission again with changes. Before we open up for com comments and discussion and questions, is there anything you'd like to add first? Well, um, we, we've lived in this house for three and a half years, and um, we've been doing improvements and upgrades to it since we've moved in. Uh, this is our final step here, so we have a backyard that we can enjoy. Um, the footprint of the products that we're going to put back there are, are very small compared to the size of our yard. Um, they're pretty high quality things. Um, when we first started to do the improvements, we considered them to be patio furniture, not full-time long-term um, buildings that would require a permit. So we, we had never thought about putting in a permit for it because it's just a, a gazebo that you buy at a Lowe's that you put together by yourself uh, to cover your, your patio. Um, it is, that is an accessory structure, I'm sure you're gonna buy by definition of a building code, like buying a shed or anything else, even if you buy it kit form at Lowe's. Sure. It's still a, a structure that quite often requires a permit. Yeah, we, we didn't know that. So when we put in the, the paperwork to to come, um, we uh, found that out. So so that's why I'm here. 
to hopefully get it approved so that we can enjoy our backyard. It's like give us some shelter, give us some privacy, but still look good in our backyard and, and meet the standards of our, our neighborhood. Do you happen to have the, I'm sorry, the cut sheets for these, these structures? Oh, the, like with actual measurements made yeah. in your uh, like materials. Heights and, and, yeah. yeah. Heights, widths, all that. They are, they are, were in the sheets that I sent on in the uh, okay. actual layout of the structure. Okay. I just forgot to upload it. It, my, my only one concern, and, and I don't know how staff feels about this, is so we get a lot of requests for standing seam metal roofs a lot lately in historic districts where they're not appropriate. And quite often we have an issue with needing to match roofing materials with the main house on when we've had garages or other structures. And so I would just look to my fellow commissioners to think about that if, if this does set precedent A. Um, and then B, you know, is is that appropriate? A little bit less than the, you know, some of the nuances of the design itself. I'll let you guys kind of look at and pick apart. But uh, I just want to think about that as a precedent setting issue. So there's your drawing, basically. It's all those parts that you have to put together. <laughs> but we don't actually know what the height. We don't is. know what the so height. The is. height is uh, probably going to approximately be about nine feet. Um, it's ten by twelve. Um, in the center of the structure, it's going to be about nine to ten feet. Um, it is a metal roof. Um, it's the metal that kind of matches the metal of our fence in our backyard. Um, that's why we bought it. It also matches the wood fencing of our backyard too. So it's something that'll blend in with our our, our backyard um, coverings and things that are in our yard currently. Um, it's also a high quality material. It's not something that's um, inexpensive, nor nor doesn't fit the uh, the neighborhood. So there are two, right? There are two. One is a small five by seven. It just goes over the grill. It basically covers the grill, so you don't get wet when you can go outside and cook under the grill. Yeah, that's, yeah, they both, that's easy. Yeah. They both match each other. Um, both really similar good. materials, uh, same color. It's like a small one, but that's that's such a nice accessory. I, you know, depends what depends what accessory code here is defined as, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to look at both of them because I talked to the yeah. zoning staff and then I talked to billing staff and they'll, they'll, they'll let you look at lot coverage too. Got I mean, I, I, from an architectural standpoint, I see sort of the, the smaller one with kind of the cloth room sort of fitting in a little bit more because it's got a more. I don't think he's using the cloth one, cloth roofing now. Oh, not not using the cloth roofing. No, the, the neither are cloth. They're both metal roofing. Both are the metal. Yes, yeah. yeah. So that's not the one. Uh, so that's actually not it. That's the actual shape of the model and stuff, but it has a metal roof, not cloth roof. They're, they're neither of them have canvas roofing. It's good to understand what that is because, like, just the way I saw that, I felt like it's it's almost so temporary and so light. It's like it's not an issue, but the metal roof. But it still might be, but it'd be nice to see it. Do these have the ability to be altered or customized to? Fit? No, they're 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 prefabricated, so they can't be customized. Um, the only customization we can do is, um, you see the wood trim along the front of the larger one. We were going to add uh, some wood trim to the top of the other one to kind of match it, but we wanted it to look a little bit more similar. So the um, roof of the other one should be exactly like what would it look like that? Right. They see they have the similar roofs, how they've got the multi-layered roof so the air could go through. Um canvas ones will, will fade, tear, and probably rip yeah, the down. This one's a little bit longer, longer term, it lasts a little bit better. Um and, and we thought it was a little bit higher quality than using the canvas versions, which could tear in the wind. Neither of these structures are permanent, they could be moved. Uh, so they're not permanent structures. Um, we've, just we've, we've heard lots of cases for temporary structures that end up being there. I'm sorry. We we hear lots of cases for structures that are oh, sure. temporary, but they end up being there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Do you have access to the actual model that you'd like us to uh, review and approve, or is that? So I, well, the, the first one, the top one, is the actual model. The other one is actually the model that we have on our thing, but it, for some reason that did look like canvas on the top of that picture. But um, that was the actual model that I pulled up online for it. But it is actual roofing like the one on the top of our one. It is a metal roof. Mm -hmm. 
but it's the exact same size and structure and shape. I am not a fan of the roofing. Um, I think that detail is significant, particularly in that stretch of homes. They're beautiful homes. I think that that, uh, and particularly because it's going to be at a, as you mentioned, a, a larger height. So that's going to be pretty exposed to visibility. Actually, our backyard is almost completely shut off from everyone. Uh, we've got a three story house that house beside us is three stories. Behind us, we have a two story garage. Mm -hmm. Inside of us, we have a two story garage from our neighbors. Um, besides the small opening that you see in our um, metal gates that goes between our houses, nobody sees our backyard. Can we open a Google map maybe and understand where these will be located on? I, my, I guess my concern is more that we have a lack of drawings for a document and file. We really don't know what the size of it is. We don't know what the modifications I'm, are that are proposed by the applicant. We I've don't have a measure survey drawing to reflect where the the structures actually go within the yard itself. I actually uploaded the um, our yard. I also have a, uh, a one foot or a five by foot structure graph paper of exactly where they're going to be and how they're going to fit. I, I don't think that that actually that that graph this graph paper drawing though does is not probably an adequate drawing for looking at context to scale of scale and, and true site plan. Well, I, I, I loaded it up with the actual scale of, of our backyard. I, I put the plat number of our backyard. It gives you the exact dimensions. Each square of the graph paper is five foot. Um, so it's going to match the exact length of our yard, the size of our plat. Well, here's what we could do. We could continue it so that you could provide additional documentation. Um, and perhaps even alternative methods of, of uh, compatibility between the structures. We could vote on it as it is today. Um, what, what would you like us to do? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure where I can provide for the, for the group here. I mean, I've provided where it's going to lay out the, the graph paper, which draws it up. I'm not, I'm not an architecture. Person, I'm a pharmacist, so sure. um, I can only provide what I can provide. It's work being done by me. I'm, I'm not having professionals come out to build this. It's not a permanent structure. Um, we, we we don't fault you for that, yeah. but we we need, we just need stuff that's accurate for the right. Um, it's, what I find here is I, I, I tend to think it's pretty accurate. I mean, here, let me, let me, let me uh, clarify like, from my perspective. The the hesitation I have is the the one product that we're looking at is. Kind of sort of what's going to be installed, but not quite because it has a different roof. Yeah. So there's an interpretation we're all kind of forced to make and guess whether or not it will be appropriate. The other thing that I'm concerned about is I don't see any dimensions on height anywhere on any of these documents. <clears throat> um, if we could find that in the documentation that I know you're saying it's about a well, certain I, size. I could bring it up online if you'd like me to. I could bring up the model numbers online. And I, I think that would be more appropriate for continuation to provide that information. Um, and then the other thing is, as they're talking about the, the drawing, I, I'm still left with understanding the trying to understand the context of the backyard in relationship to other elements, because I know you've provided the flat sure. and then you provide the graph paper, which is kind of disassociated from the context. So what would help me understand the, the plan a little bit better is if that um, drawing were in context of the overall lot rather than a zoomed in area. Sure. If you could, if you bring up the graph paper again, it actually has where the garage is. It has our fences. It has our fence line. Uh, it puts it in perspective. Um, if you enlarge that graph paper, um, you actually go all the way down. That is our neighbor's garage on the, if you go further down, or if you move it up. So I think we, we, we appreciate this drawing specifically. I think we would like to see an expanded view of the entire lot, uh, meaning the house itself with the garage and the placement of the two gazebos uh, within the lot. So, so here it is right now. There's the house. You can see the two garages and you can see the gazebos. Uh, the gazebos are a very, very small part of our lot. We actually have a pretty large lot. Um, you can see where the outline of the patio is right behind the house. 
Um, it kind of shows you where it lies in existing. I mean, it's a 10 by 12 foot structure, but our, our backyard is 40 foot wide and 80 foot long. So the footprint is very small compared to, to the actual size of our yard and our house and our garage. I think when you speak with zoning, I think what they're going to request is maybe that you that all these uh, structures be placed on that survey that's that's measured. So I think that you're going to need to do that anyway for the zoning process. So you know you might want to just if they continue it, go ahead and send them the materials. I think I sent I sent you this. send you the little link to zoning info. Uh, you did. You, yeah. see, you you asked me if I wanted to go to start the zoning process an hour or wait till after the meeting. Right. So I thought I'd wait for the meeting so I know what to do. Right. And so then, if they give you more direction on what kind of uh, map or, or site plan they're going to require, then you could bring that, produce that, and bring that. Yes. I. Was it mentioned? Yeah. And you know, there's there's this documentation issue which may be separate from. Approval issues. So, right. you know, like for example, we might not object to it, but we've got no certainty on the height and the width and some other things. So, there's some things that probably are homework for you to do to just work with Connie to get something that's probably acceptable, regardless of what, what the actual item is, so that we can know what we're actually approving and so that there's no subjectivity in the approval. So, that, you know, if a neighbor says, well, he did it, why can't I? We know exactly the size of it, height, width, et cetera, all the material. I think one of the things that we, we need to have clarity on is things you propose to change because a code inspector will look at what you build out there versus what's approved. And we don't really want to have to deal with sorting out an issue later where you said, well, I kind of sort of did something to it, but that's not the approval because then you're going to find yourself on the backside of potentially not having approval, which you just want to protect you as well. So I, I do want to give you. Kudos because you're you're hey you're enthusiastic you are trying to do it yourself and you are you know you're, you're trying to make something work here you, you've lovingly kept the house itself going beautiful historic home so I want to give you accolades for that um, I actually do want to additionally point one other thing out and just get clarity sort of on the roof material itself because I did catch something in a photo so in the seven page file that's this file go up if you go to page number four. And this is maybe one of the first times I actually see metal roofing in a historic district. Mm -hmm. it's, and I don't know if you have options regarding the finish mm -hmm. of that metal roof that you, you're proposing for both of your structures or the type or how the seam itself looks. But this may be one of the few exceptions of, of actually seeing a metal roof. I don't know if that's original Connie or if that's, you know, there are some instances where copper elements were on buildings. So maybe this is one of the rare exceptions for a metal how much metal is appropriate is a whole different discussion. Um, but I would still like to make sure that you have guidance from us, even though we may not take an action tonight um, of approval, if there's a continuance that just gives you the right direction about how, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, there's, you know, five people here and there's probably five different opinions potentially. So I'd like to hear more a little bit about people's feelings on the, the metal roofing mm -hmm. too as well. Yeah, personally, I don't have any objection to, to what you've presented in, in theory. Just want a little bit more clarity um, on those elements that I've already discussed. Otherwise, I think we're heading in the right direction from my perspective. Right. I have no objection uh, too much about the, the metal roof. And I, I think okay. I like that there's also the precedent of the neighboring structure. Do you like the. Uh... Well, it's, it's there, right? And right. It's, it's starting to match what we're seeing uh, with the gazebo that you're. Patina and copper is probably a lot more relevant than I think. What are you proposing? Like a shiny black finish or something? So there's there's ways that you can probably make what you're proposing fit the historic district even more. They and, and they do sell a um, patina copper color that okay. we could potentially paint the roofing with to make it fit in a little bit better. Is it painted? Or yeah, yeah, they, there's actually a paint that causes a, the, the metal to become patina to look like a copper. Um, a lot of old houses like this, like this neighbor, this or neighbor's house, uh, there are a lot of copper roofs, whether it's on the front of the house or back porches that do exist in some of the neighborhoods. But um, if we were to alter it, which we weren't planning, but we could make it a patina copper top instead, 
um, to change the coloration, which would probably match that a little bit. If if you also, by the way, what helps strengthen your case is if you know of other elements like this in the in, around your neighbors that have kind of pieces like this that help support metal bruce, that just makes your case stronger, helps our files be stronger, helps give us a, a reason to prove it, that there's precedent already there potentially. Yes. So some extra photos would probably go a go long way. Of other people's homes? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. If, if, if specifically if things like that, you know, it, it exists already, then we don't have to question, is this even appropriate? In terms of the drawings, I know that there are like requirements on file, but for me, if, again, if you took the Google, just this is just me, right? if you took that Google Earth uh, view of your, and now in your two scale, if you showed us exactly where it was going, that would also help in addition to your graph drawing, right? So just take a snapshot of this and show us on this where you are locating those two. Um, that brings a little bit more reality to uh, against your drawings. So you have a drawing and then you have this. Are you able to blow that picture up right there? Zoom in. And you can see our house right there now. Can I point something out on the picture? Am I able to walk up there? So right now, our patio that we put in replaced the old one, so it's the exact same dimensions. So this small area right here is where it's going to go. It's going to cover that area right here, so 10 by 12 foot. This is our yard. So this is the small area is going to cover. The other one's going to cover the grill right in here. It's only a five by seven foot area. So the area it's going to cover is just that small area there. This is our entire house and our entire yard. Here is the neighbor's window that you saw over there with the copper patina. It's right over here. So this is where everything would be right in that area. So that's 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 the size of it. So it's not really a huge footprint. Our yard is actually rather very large. So this this is where our hot tub's going to be. This is going to cover our hot tub right here. So it's just a small area. I think uh, Connie's. I think you may find that if you go through zoning, you're going to have to end up doing a hard line site drawing, right? And, and so I, I think this is helpful, definitely, for clarifying to the commission here about the intention. But I, I think her recommendation of finding out the, the requirements at zoning might just set you up for a lot easier time here next time on providing some of that clarity. We could. Yeah. It's up to the other yeah. it is It is up to the yeah, other what they would like to request. Um, we can make a we can we always vote in the affirmative no matter what we can take a vote we can you can just ask to table it you can work with staff based on the comments you've received this evening um it's really up to you could it, could i um offer something mm -hmm. the five by seven foot could i put it up patina the finish on it take pictures of it and then show you that in the next setting at least that would show you the setting of what that one looks like in position of where it's at so that you could get an idea of the the size and the, the the breadth of where it's going to be would that be then like a temporary install sort of like a mock-up could that be considered a temporary mock-up for okay so you you've already purchased it i purchased both of them uh, they've actually been purchased for over a year because we've been planning this for quite some time yeah yeah i mean you know it's always a risk to, to never approved it. put something up change it yeah. and then if it's not approved the smaller one I could probably put up within a few hours. It's it's nice. It's not a huge project. I'm not building a garage or a free or permanent state. If if I, I feel like if we continue the case and you choose to set up a mock up and work with Connie to see a mock up, I'm gonna call it a mock up. Yeah. Uh, and you do a patina finish and you get some clarity on some dimensions and some things. Perhaps you probably have a stronger case based on a lot of the other comments. I think you you've heard this evening. So. I think I, I would be in favor of continuing this to allow you to work with staff to build a better case here. Okay. I would say too, you know, as as usual, they have a, a, a homeowners association, but it's only two people. Okay. <laughs> you know, or two sure. people. So basically, talk to that to him so you don't. Well, we've already had a, we don't have a call, but yeah. they're doing something without approval. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's, been, it's been approved by our, it's called a condo commission, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's just my neighbors and I, they've already approved it. They've approved the fencing and everything. So, so it's nothing that they haven't already approved. 
Um, but yeah, if I, if I lock it up, I put it together, I patina the finish, and then I could show you the finished product so that you can see what the larger one it, it might entail um, on the property. Maybe that would give you a better idea. I think allowing the time at the, the applicant time to do a lock up and get some further information and would be appropriate here. So is there a motion to continue? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Yeah, that's good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Moving on to case number nine. Multiple addresses on Hollywood Avenue, Kimball Place. Good evening, gentlemen. If you could raise your right hand, each. Do you both swear to tell the truth in your testimony for the commission this evening? Yes. If you could each state your name and association with the multiple properties for a file on record here. Uh, Bill Ansoff, I'm with Arcadis, we're the uh, project engineer on the project. Wonderful. Uh, Gregory Barton, Department of Public Utilities, Division Storage and Drainage for System Engineering Function. Great, thank you. Have a seat. Okay, so this is a complicated uh, set of drawings here, but we've been looking at them for quite a while. Uh, some of the commissioners present have been out to the site along with staff and with uh, authorities and us off um, to look at uh, up and down both of these streets. Um, so this will include constructing permeable paper streets on Linwood Avenue and Kimball Place, constructing a rain garden on the corner of South Champion Avenue and Woodbury Street. And will also include, uh, it is, uh, consists of demolition of some trees, which we talked about all of those sidewalks, curbs, retaining walls, stairs, miscellaneous items in the right of way that may need to be construction and statement in the locations identified. Um, materials would be placed with new sidewalks, stairs, tree lawn, tree lawns. Um, that, it's actually not going to be a new tree lawn. On um, Linwood, there will be, not on Kim. Okay. Uh, Curbs, Division of Public Service approved retaining walls, DPS approved permeable pavers, storm sewers, water mains, water service con connections, and the rain garden. Um, okay, now the application was reviewed by the Commission in March 2021, and a site visit was conducted with Arcadius Division of Sewerage and Drainage staff, Department of Public Utilities staff, HPO staff, and commissioners. Um, and the reason that you are reviewing this is that part of HRC's duties. Uh, According to 311704D, is to advise the mayor and make recommendations, uh, not approvals, as to the conservation of the city structures, site groups, and dis districts, or as to any alteration, rehabilitation, or demolition proposed for a city owned property, park, or right of way listed in the Columbus Register of Historic Properties. Uh, so we have, uh, since we did the site visit, uh, I was also sent some. Uh, information and, and uh, options for um, some of the uh, railings and, and I basically kind of chose one. They're, they're very simple. And that's what generally we recommend. Those are the ones. And then also for uh, the uh, replacement of one wall, retaining wall, which is like a 1970s wall concrete block wall and so I thought something simple would be that would that would be retained. Um, that that one's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and also as you might remember this was going to be widened they're gonna you know yeah. shorten the the hill, the, the slopes in front of the houses and make it for the tree on and everything. So that so they're not going to do that now. It's going to be retained the, the same character. Um, and the the, the replacement uh, concrete block material for uh, is it concrete block or is it stone? So for the retaining wall, uh, it'll be concrete, concrete block. It's just what I chose was just this a simple design. So you can let me know if you disagree with that. Um, this is going that you know, that's not too big. It's it's replacing a a very basic concrete block wall. So I thought you know, something sort of basic would be. So recommend a uh, 
an affirmative recommendation. <laughs> I mean, I, I have no comments on this entire snow. I think this has been pretty thorough, and I remember being out to the site, and I remember the original proposal, and actually I'm quite pleased with the amount of preservation by reducing the scope as is presented this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to my fellow commissioners to make comments. What's the length of this? <laughs> the length? Um, not like the dimension, but how the extent is it across the south side? Several homes. Right? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's all street. Street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the entire street. Mm -hmm. So it will be consistent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess my, my comment is also similar. I think the being newer to the this project and discussions you guys have had prior, I'm having a hard time uh, interpreting the drawings and understanding the full extent of the right. retaining walls and where these new handrails are located and all that. But I would also defer to others that are more familiar. We don't need to rehash all, all the things that have been reviewed in the past. And, and, uh, and it's my understanding there's one existing wall being preserved and one wall being replaced. Otherwise, there are no other retaining walls. And no other. There was a proposal to significantly alter the front lawns, which actually this commission did not take so well. Um, so that I think this is more of a, and, and there was going to be an introduction of the tree line by force make some alterations. I, I actually think this is a better outcome than what had been proposed. Okay. Because that's just my sole opinion. Yeah. No, I would agree as well. I guess and it's a lot if birds which are not stone now they look stone uh, and pavers where there's I guess there were pavers underneath at, at, at one point. Is that correct or not? Uh, we've been told by neighbors that we're back in the 70s that there are stone pavers underneath the asphalt. Um, just a brief correction. Um, we will be re replacing three walls, two on Kimball, two on one on Linwood. So, okay. no historic wall. No there's, historic wall. There's, there's even like, a historic wall where yeah, it's so like so one historic wall. Yeah, yeah, one. And there's no introduction of new walls. You know, there's the low curves in some areas, correct? Right. We're, we have. We talk about that. Curve walls behind the sidewalk support the bank. We get a lot of requests for people to add new retaining walls, which can be problematic. Mm -hmm. And how high are those curves? I forget them. They were just like six inches or something. Yeah, most of them are six inches. Uh, I think the largest might be twelve inches. Um, and that was sort of a compromise we talked about. You know, to avoid putting in. And this just the general gist of this project is from a global perspective, because we do have a several new commissioners here. This is largely being done to address stormwater. Uh, actually, it's um, so the city of Columbus is under um, a consent decree, actually two for CSOs, combined sewer overflows and san a separate sanitary overflows. This area has two separate sanitary overflows in it. The idea is to pull the stormwater away from the foundations, put it out into the street, capture it either through rain gardens or, in most cases, permeable pavers in this area. Um, and that way we can treat the water, store it, keep it from going into the sanitary sewer, and make, make the city of Columbus compliant with their consent decree. So that's the purpose of the project. Yeah. Yeah, this is Blueprint Columbus. Yeah. It's part of the uh, 2015 integrated plan, well weather management plan update, uh, which was a follow up to the 2005 submittal uh, for a well weather management plan to address CSOs, and combined sewer overflows, and sanitary sewer overflows. The goal is to treat the stormwater, the additional stormwater that we're putting on streets from the roof redirection, the sump pumps with rent stalling. Um, we're doing no harm on the storm outfalls. So the peak flow coming out of the storm outfalls now will remain the same. Uh, we're going to get a TSS total suspended solid reduction with this project and meet our goal of 20% of the project. Also, we're going to eliminate, as Bill said, the design sanitary sewer overflows, which are two on the project area. And we're also going to eliminate the water and basement or sewage backups in the basements. Good. I'd like to make. Go ahead. Can I give a shout? 
I'd like to make a motion to uh, recommend approval as been submitted for the uh, uh, the drawing today for HR hyphen twenty two hyphen zero nine hyphen zero one nine. <laughs> there is a motion for recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Having a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like uh, case number 10 has been withdrawn this evening. Any just FYI for the record information coming for us? Um, they'll be back for this, for this rethinking some things. Okay, on to case number 11 here, 617 South Avenue, South Ohio Avenue. If you could raise your right answer, do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony for the commission to see? I do. If you could take your full name and association with the property, correct. Bart Overly, Blostein Overly Architects. Wonderful, thank you. And Connie Stewart has stepped out, but we still have form, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Then uh, continue. Okay, so this um, is a multi purpose or multi faceted project here. Um, I did just get some uh, revised drawings yesterday, um, and I did put those up just in, in uh, the uh, interest of trying to move this forward, trying to get some things. Moving forward before I retire. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but there's still some things I will need to point out. Um, let's see. So this has to do with exterior signing. This building at, at one point several years ago, 2012, I think it was, um, aluminum signing was removed and this wood shank was found underneath. And um, I think Mark can talk about what's under there, which apparently is nothing other than plywood. Um, so the proposal is to everything <clears throat> to put a uh, party board with a uh, smooth party board with um, wood corner boards over that and repair the existing soffit and fascia, which is already there. Um, the windows actually were also several years ago uh, replaced without approval. There were wood windows. Um, but they're not original, but they're going to repair those now rather than replace them. <clears throat> uh, remove the front porch, which is not original, and uh, build a new front porch. So with uh, proposing rail needs to be steel. Uh, doors in the front and rear uh, will be replaced. They're not original now, and we discuss this at the business meeting, and they have uh, those now half light doors rather than, and they are wood doors, right? They're wood. Um, a half light doors rather than craftsman door. Uh, wood trim and transoms will be retained. Uh, existing to unpainted brick trim needs to be soda blasted, tuck blanket and maintained in current state. Uh, we construct the rear addition roof, remove existing low slope shed roof on the one uh, rear addition. We construct, construct new hip roof uh, for the cemented drawings. Uh, repair and paint concrete block for garage. Uh, we'll have a new flush steel door. Overhead door and pedestrian door, purpose door. And the concrete block will not be painted. Uh, new parking pad. So now they are closing uh, one parking pad with uh, pavers uh, so that it, uh, on uh, sand so that it would be permeable. Uh, also, just replacing the existing rear yard and front yard sidewalks and service steps. <clears throat> Um, so, as I'm saying, the window siding was removed from the house several years ago. The existing wood replacement windows and existing roofing shingles were installed prior to approval around 2012. So, I don't really know where the shingles are uh, because they weren't approved. Um, September 1st business meeting comments include revise uh, the front porch drawings, move the brick piers up to the porch floor, and provide drawing of wood railing. Uh, proposed Doors craftsman style provide cut sheets for half light or three quarter light doors, which they have done. Provide side plan and permeable pavement material for a single service parking space adjacent to the existing garage, which they have done. Uh, so, I, you know, you can, after discussion, decide what you're going to do, but I would, I would still recommend continuing to allow time to provide additional information. Uh, so the blasting of a historic basement is, is not appropriate, would not be uh, recommended by staff. 
uh, provide, provide detailed drawing for a wood railing on the new front porch rather than steel. Don't feel that steel is an appropriate material for the neighborhood. Uh, and move the brick piers of the new front porch up to the deck of the of the porch floor. At this point, I think they're still continuing from the ground. My uh, thought was that you were suggesting they could be moved up to the porch floor. Uh, provide cut sheets for parking pad pavers. We know there's pavers, but I'm not sure exactly what they are. And then any uh, paint colors or exterior light fixtures. Hopefully so yeah. not much original on this house, unfortunately. Right. Right. Hopefully, yeah, like that. Uh, let's see. So, good synopsis. Thank you. Um, the siding. I think we mentioned party party board, but we would actually like to use LP Smart Side if that's an approved material. Otherwise, we would use hardy board. Um, I actually misunderstood the comments from the business meeting and thought the, the, the concept was to move the brick piers lower so they were less massive. Um, but we certainly can, we certainly can revisit some of the details of this front porch. I think the, the interest of the client is to uh, have the ability to move forward with some of the renovation work given the deteriorating state of this structure. Um, and, and we'd be happy to return with more details about the, the porch area if, if that's warranted. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think, uh, I think at the garage area, um, on the site plan, we are rebuilding the entire apron approaching the, the alley. So that's the, the concrete area you see in the back. And then the, the rest of that parking pad, the additional parking pad would be, uh, two by two pavers. So a perme permeous, permeable surface. Would there be spaces between and uh, you know? Yeah, we could leave. We'll, we're going to put it in a in a paver base and that's going to be twenty feet. Yeah. Connie, looking at the the size of the parking pad area in addition to the garage, does that require variance or anything? Will the applicant have to come back home? Um, like well, I mean. It's gonna. It, it'll have to be because, especially since there's a new uh, apron, it'll have to go through. It, it'll go to zoning, and then they send it out to whoever okay. service whoever, whoever reviews that. Okay. Because yeah. then we we would see him again on a recommendation for variances or. Oh, for variances. Um, I I know I've, I hadn't thought about that actually because it would be three spaces instead of right. Uh, Actually, the song is four. And that's the that's the thing is, is this three spaces or four? I mean, I yes. was I, I just there's a there's the a, intention is it's three spaces, mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason for that is this is this is still a double. It was whoever owned it prior to our client converted it into a double, so it has a fire rated vestibule, a single entrance, so it'll remain that. But um, you know, by code we. We actually don't have enough parking spaces unless we get the third parking pad. So we could reduce the size of the parking pad. I, I don't have any issue with that, but I think we need it from a revolving apron. Yeah, I, I think I think I generally concur, which is with I think where Stewart's going with this. When you look at the amount of apron and the amount of parking pad, there is basically a room to double stack two cars in there on the garage. We and then something yeah. yeah is it going to be maintained as a single family or is it going to no it's a, the it's a double yeah how many units per side uh right. it's actually one over one so it's yeah. flat and a flat two bedroom three bedroom two bedroom two bedroom both two bedroom yeah, so we're we're flexible about the size of that pad it's a really good looking we need, need it from a code standpoint that's
have a question for. Yeah. Do you have enough information for uh, for changing the roots, shape of the roots on the rear? I think that roof was a converted rear porch at some point in this home's history. Uh, it's a super low slope. Uh, it, it's presented a number of leak issues for the client. And so the, the solution was just to create the hip that would be very much like the front of the building. Is that what we're seeing um, in the west elevation? That's that new hit roof shown? Uh, Drawing number 5181. Sure it is. Okay, there's the image yeah. of the existing. Yeah. Would be concerned with the condition. Yeah, that's right. Chimneys can be treated with it. I was going to say your drawing doesn't show the chimney anymore. What's uh, that, that chimney will remain. We're going to keep that. I, I we omitted it in the drawing, but it'll be there. We got to keep all the chimneys. Yeah, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. The uh, there you'll see in the plans. There's actually a there's a chimney that I think again the previous owner removed through the roof. So there's. The, the rest of the chimney going through the house that would be removed, but it's it's gone at the roof already. That that chimney will remain. So you're then bumping this gutter line up, then framing it out. Yeah. Yeah, so to answer your question, Connie, I think there's enough information from my perspective. Um, the only thing I have additional questions on would be the LP smart side has a large seven inch exposure. How appropriate really is that as a material? Um, it comes in smaller exposures. I'm I'm a little indifferent about it. So if if there's a are you looking for five inch, six inch? Three to five, I was yeah we're, we're always in that three to five range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we uh Commit to moving that to five inch. Have we used, has this product been used in the? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an engineered wood. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's so it actually hard to call it a wood product, but it is engineered wood. And it, the, the nice thing about it is it comes in longer lengths than hardy boards. So you have uh, less of those seams. Yeah, it's good. What is the run? I think 17 feet. It's cool. Do we have to approve this as a test case or is or not? No, I think so because it's 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 actually wood. Yes. Not solid, just straight straight of porch. It's in the living conditions. And so you can just have staff completely prior. Personally, just we're just kind of discussing some thoughts on this, just open the table about it. Um, I mean, you're really close. I like the idea that we're there. You're very uh, accommodating and so forth to this. Uh, one of my concerns is we need a little more detail on that roof that you're putting in, um, how it's going to uh, interact with the existing chimney that's there relatively close to that area and how that's going to be flashed, how that's going to incorporate from that mm -hmm. perspective. The parking pad is larger than I think it should be, in my opinion. Um, and then the porch detail, which, you know, I think that that interpretation is an easy fix. So you're going to take those all the way up. Assuming. So if we take yeah. the brick piers all the way up to the underside of the no, we, board we, down. We, we talked about going down. That's, that's what I thought. 
Yeah, we talked about taking them down to the floor line of the what we're sorry. Right. What I was thinking was, you know, yeah, sure. about that they would start here. Yes. And yes, that's exactly it. Out, right? Yes. Yep. You have a cap or something here and then it goes up. The issue was is that the like historically most porches when they struck these piers on the corners, mm -hmm. you would still read the slab or the porch deck right. coming through in a complete horizontal left and right. Oh, so you're saying you don't like the piers running all past down. Right. Yes. I see. Um, would it be possible? I mean, given given the you know we're we're going to make accommodations on the size of the siding. Could we return with some additional details of that porch and, and allow the the client to get some? Yeah. Yeah, I think started. I think we could probably move it to staff approval and get it achieved once we get it. I was I was just going to ask what you know on the side of the porch. What are you doing from the floor the the floor of the porch down? Is that just exposed concrete? Yeah. So to me, it's probably just bringing the exposed concrete all the way through and around. So not not cutting it back where the piers are. Yeah, just, don't just let letting the, them post up. Let the brick piers start up the top of the. Or lay them up right on top, mm -hmm. then go up. So <laughs> that, that would be simple. Yeah, you're, sounds good. You, you're not thinking. Are you? Were you thinking of removing everything that's there? The whole a portion? absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and you're going to rebuild it. Yeah, it's it's, it's. Is it the same footprint, or you, were you making it larger? It's the same footprint, okay. but it's it's fallen. Every bit of it is falling apart. I'd, I'd be fine with that provision, though, on the pier being just submitted to staff, whether advised or not. And follow up on the light fixtures and the other notes. Yeah. So what about do you think that you think that steel railings are appropriate? I don't think steel railings are appropriate. The the upper on the second side. We were doing that just to keep it a little lighter looking. To me it's about the picket spacing. Um I don't know if there's any way to fat the corners, but but the first one that's split is there. Could you, you change it? There's there's wood right now, but that's not clearly not original. I just think you're gonna. I think it's setting a precedent because there's a lot there's a lot of houses nearby mm -hmm. that are starting to use metal and they're using curved metal, all kinds of unusual stuff. And we just think, <laughs> you know, when did we see metal railings on a historic house? In the past, and having wood on the first door, metal on the second. Turn of turn of the century, though, we, wouldn't we have a combination of Maybe like we could have wood piers and iron. Depending uh, on the, the the house, but if, if it was a more a more elaborate high style house, I would think that simple or simple vernacular house. Would there be any objection to just working with staff on appropriate wood or hardy wheat railings? I think it's that be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that could be a revision. That's the last thing. Maybe. Well, you were. He said. Were you weren't. What, we're going to hear, so. what about the size of the parking bed? Can we make it ten by no further than the, than the structure? So we're back at four feet off on the length. Keep it so yeah. that that way we have some screening because we'll need, you know, you've got multiple people over there. So we keep people from running up into the yard. We can do that. We're going to have a little pathway that'll jog to get to it if we pull it back. But that's right on the corner of the yeah. gate, right? So, so we pull saying. it back from the yard. Yeah. If you made it, I think if you brought it in 10, I think that's still plenty of room to get a vehicle in there and move around and do all that and to encourage people to stay a little further. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And then my last comment was so the blasting of historic masonry is not appropriate. It's pressure grade. Blasting with anything in general. And just cleaning, cleaning with it. water and appropriate. It's not, like, it's not even painted. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. How are the, the brick is not in good condition. I was going to say, is it, is it crumbling? Is it worse? Mm -hmm. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So blasting with anything is just going to destroy it. Even power washing. We, we just saved your clients some money. They don't have to blast the chimneys. They can make the team. That's that. We like a little bread off the of brick. Care, we will work carefully with brick that remains. 
And what about the drawings for the, the roof? I, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with looking at looking at that. Well, I, I think that there was no chimney on page two. You just want us to roof find line. Show, show us where it's coming in. Right. Just how the flashing is going to roll. Some flashing detail. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's just this is not in the drawing. Right. You may have to actually create a valley to go around it. I think where it sits on that roof plane. Yeah, we'll we'll look at it. But I think there's enough chimney to get away with that. Mm -hmm. if there's enough chimney. There's enough height. You yeah, can, you'll get away with it. It's, it's, it's not a functioning. East, but keep the water out though. Is that better clarity for you, Tony? How does staff feel about us giving you that opportunity, or would you rather them come back to us? Uh, it's either that or splitting it into two two applications. Uh, if you have clarity on this, I'm I'm okay pushing it into your whatever your whatever you like. I think I think that's fine. Okay. Their motion. Well, I make a motion to. Can you give one? Can you? No, give one. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just no. having fun. Super. Just having fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, for HR 2209 uh, 21, I make a motion to. Stop. No, no, approve. Approve. Okay. Uh, to approve uh, the, this application. Um, with the recommendations of um, staff approval for additional drawings, looking at the roof with um, uh, flashing details, uh, taking a look at the railing um, on the second level, um, bringing up the brick to meet the top of the concrete base, and uh, cutting back um, and shortening the uh, parking uh, path. Additionally, I would propose that your motion includes um, the other notes that staff had included, which is light fixtures on the exterior. Eight colors and light fixtures. Eight colors. Oh, so the last thing. And not so the last thing. And that we also accept the applicant's proposal to switch to the LP siding. With a shorter. With, with a with shorter height. Six inches or less. Five. I think with five, five. 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 five inches. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I think you got clarity on this. Yeah. Great. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Going on to case number 12, 538 550 East Town Street. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? Yes. If you could state your full name and association with the property for record. My name is Kevin Parzik. I am an architect at Gunsman Architecture and Interiors with the architects for the applicant. Wonderful. Thank you. Connie. Okay. So there's a lot going on here, and I did go out and take some additional photos and put notes on it. So maybe running through those at the end, at the end might be helpful. Um, so recommend re recommendation for a change of use, uh, change of use from an office building to mixed use building, which will include a uh, child care facility and office space. Uh, staff supports that. Mm -hmm. um, there would be uh, a new exterior ramps, one on the front of the building, which generally we have concern about. Since the business meeting, that ramp has been pulled away from the, that historic connector. Um, so I think we can support that uh, because there are already is a rather large uh, concrete staircase there. Um, let's see what else we got. We got a new addition on the rear. So this is going to be a lot of discussion and I just kind of listed up some points. The discussion is a port concrete ramp okay as long as it does not connect with the front wall of the connector. Um, on the rear and north carriage house elevation is the proposed uh, first floor window too tall and should it match the 1974 photo. Um, on the east carriage house elevation, uh, would shuttered second floor door uh, to match the rear shutters be more appropriate than a fixed door? Um, is a new door opening appropriate? If so, could it be centered beneath the upper floor openings? Uh, discussion of gas meters, AC condensers, not shown on the drawings, but there are there any changes to that? 
uh, was brought up in the business meeting, have the metal stairs attained any significance uh, on the east elevation of the connector between the house and the carriage house? Uh, what is the extent of demolition for a new addition? Could any door opening sills, lintels be retained on the interior? And on the north elevation of the 538 East Town Street house, are the two boarded over windows still existing? <coughs> On the, on the drawings, it says uh, existing painted wood lap siding, but it looks like there's windows that are covered over. Uh, the elaborate, elaborate cornice is not shown on the drawings. Are there any repairs to that or painting? Is it appropriate to change a window to a door opening on the existing one story addition? And the north elevation of the connect connector is it appropriate to change two window openings to door openings? And is it appropriate to enlarge the smaller window on the east end? So I know that was a lot of stuff there. But if you kind of go to the rear, the last photos, the clean building. So just keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the gives that is so there's the connector where there will be a a ramp across this way, but but not actually connected to the building. <coughs> no. Uh, up there. Can we go to the we're going to discuss things and we'll look up the ones that I put in. <laughs> if you have anything you want to add, Kevin. Um, I would just add that a couple of things to point out. It's a somewhat unique uh, use of a building in terms of the building code. The, the building code does require more doors at very little kid classrooms. So that's why we're proposing doors be added in the places that we are. Um, and the, the building code requirement for any any classroom having kids two and a half years or younger to require um, a door leading directly to the exterior um, without getting down to grade five stairs. So that's why we're showing two ramps in this application. It's it's directly related to the uh, change of use from office to daycare. Um, the other things I would point out about the building and the property, um, there's been many different eras of construction on the lot uh, where we are adding doors. It's a roughly 1940s, 1950s um, vintage, uh, the one story piece. Uh, there's also two treatments on the rear facade. One is like a stucco um, on presumably masonry, and one is an exposed clay brick masonry. Similar to the buildings, but the, those two one story portions we understand to be constructed at the same time. So, long story short, we're trying to put doors in what we would consider the least contributing um, historic items. Um, so no real work proposed to anything on the building exterior that's of the 1850s, 1860s vintage. We're not, not intending to change the fullness uh, at the front of the building. Um, really, really very minimal. For, Probably no repairs um, to those elements unless it's uh, somehow if we find that they're going to fail, at which point we would come back. So we're not proposing any repairs to the sort of 1860s portion, but um, as part of this work. Well, I apologize that I didn't get any of these on there, but starting at each wall, each side, because there's a lot. Uh, so they're going, they're going to rebuild this again with brick to match, is that correct? And include one window. Um, right. The the brick that is in grayish um, that was added this summer, um, just before our client purchased the building. There was an automobile accident where a car made that hole and destroyed a window. So and we um, don't know when this was put in and filled there, but that's only in looking at your pictures. I suspect yeah. after you know it's sometime in the late eighteenth century. Right. So then after the next building. Okay, so these are the, the stairs that Joe mentioned, or do they have any contain any significance? Uh, this would be secure clothes, and my my question was would be putting some of the shutters over it like it's on the rear, would that be maybe something more appropriate for the character? Uh, they would introduce a new door here, so it wouldn't be symmetrical, but I see, you know, understand why. 
you know, this is all here, but it's introducing a door there appropriate. This will be a new one story addition over here. Um, so on this side of it, uh, the new shed roof addition would cover this area right here, go back, go, go all along here underneath this covering here. So I was asking, is there anything that's going to be, we don't know what the demolition extent is. Yeah, and I, I can just clarify that. It, unless there is, it, there is one photo that, that I saw of some really bad flaking paint that may be one of the doors. We would yeah. want to address that. Yeah. And, probably led to a child care center. Right. But in general, we would leave the brick in place. We'd leave any fixed windows in place. The sort of uh, 538C door, um, we are proposing turning that just into a masonry opening, just so that there's another door um, in a strange interior spot. But um, we would probably leave a majority of the existing construction exposed to view. Um, just to so make it's it so this is the door. This is a historic door. I wanted to show that We're next one. Building. Again, so this would be um, all this would be covered by the addition. This uh, this would be converted to a door here. Uh, and um, to me, it looks like there's windows under here. So I just wanted some clarification on that. I don't know if you know that. So uh, there is an elevator. That were, uh, oh no, this is not the elevator portion. I, I'm so great. Go down here. Uh, which uh, window? I can't see. It looks like there are just windows covered over. Um, there in the it's sort of the, the third floor or, or probably originally an attic. Um, a it's number a weird of, addition. Yeah, a number of the existing sort of attic windows are still in place. Um, as for this spot, I am not certain. Okay. I just kind of wanted to run through these just to, because there's so much going on. So, again, this would be converted to a door. Next photo. So, back up a minute. I'm sorry. So, what's proposed for that little bit of that porch, third floor area? Is there? It's currently interior space to the building, and it would be part of the um, office administrative portion of the daycare on the third floor. Okay, so basically you're going to keep the window in the center and then... Yeah, no proposed changes to the exterior. You're not even replacing the windows or anything, are you? We are currently not planning on replacing okay. windows. But you're going to treat the exterior with some... some your drawing looks like it has something on it. Oh, you're just going to paint it? I think, it's, I think we were trying to say it's a thing painted finish that will remain. But it says lap siding or something like that. Right, yeah, yeah. and there's also not to, the, to the right of that image, there's lap siding. Right. Right. And it's a different siding, which we'll also, we're proposing to keep it as is. Um, this is kind of the last area. Uh, convert these two windows to door openings. Arch this door window to, to match these. So sorry about all that. I just thought I might clarify things a little bit. That was really helpful, actually. Thank you. <laughs> Well, there's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Quite a bit. Go one by one. We, you know, we typically don't generally like when we get proposals for converting windows to doors. However, we must weigh the future reuse of a historic structure taking on a new life. And this is a very unique circumstance where the Reuse of a daycare requires the code of egress pattern directly from a classroom to the outside. And maybe that this might be a very rare exception compared to a single family homeowner's home. And I believe one of the doors is actually even in a relatively newer addition within the compound. And so I'm less concerned about that because it's just a stucco. It, yeah, of, of, of yeah. the doors we're proposing at the rear, yeah, they're all located in the 19, let's say the mid-century, um, mid-20th century edition. Yeah, I think the 1951 Sanborn didn't have those on there. Yeah, and, it, and I had seen 1940s some yeah, other something. records, so it's tough to tell exactly yeah, when exactly. they built it or if they got picked up on that. Right. So if, oh, I guess for record for us to, I guess, learn from this, uh, let the, I, you know, as Joe is saying, is that not typically we wouldn't allow changing, adding so many doors and windows are. 
Um, and in this case, if we were to go with that, you know, we would follow what we've done always. It basically means they can't use the building or what they intend to use it. They've got an approval to use it. Right. right. So that would be the reason. It, it's rare it's in that rare. situation. And, and I think there's one conversion, there's one window moving over, which is a little different. Normally we try to keep openings consistent yeah. with historic openings. But in this case, you've got a building that has transformed from perhaps even residential to residential, commercial, commercial, <laughs> multiple use, multiple use. And it's, yeah, and it's just lived its life and it's still existing. So perhaps part of that continuation justifies a few minor considerations. I have no problem with the, I think staff question about the concrete ramps, especially because they are pulled back from the building. So hence that while we have a new concrete ramp going in, it's away from the building. And given this track record in building history here, we don't know how long that ramp would stay there until it goes away and it becomes something else. Right. Uh, I have no problem with the additional ramp, especially because it does, again, it, it adapts a modern building for what has been become pretty standard code of required accessibility. So. And I think there was mention of one area to be infilled with shutter type situations. Is that right? Well, it's the a door that's existing that they're not going to use anymore. Page uh, forty. Yeah. It's so there. they're securing that yeah. okay. close, and so if you go to the back, is there these the shutters on the yeah. back? Which I'll pull that. Yeah. You know, farther outside. So yeah. it has shutters on, you know, is that it's not something the commission usually uh, recommends doing, but since there are shutters on there, would it be kind of appropriate to maybe put something to match over that than just a slab door? Well, um, to, to be honest, I want you to, to go to that page 40 and then zoom in on the head of that door. Right. And you can yeah. see that the window mm -hmm. was widened. Uh, to force fit this door. Yeah. It's been off centered. I, I feel like, you know, I don't know. Like, is this a case where if this thing got filled with brick, it's not that bad because it's, I mean, this door is an enlargement of a window opening off center. It's, I mean, if you could find the brick to match well enough wouldn't feather that in, I think that would be a really Would there any good ever? See the benefit to putting a window back in here. That's like taking the cues from the window right above it. And well, I think there'd be a huge be benefit, benefit to, to the interior space, certainly. So, um, I mean, if you could almost just put the window back that used to be there based on the width of what the brick is showing us, it would reduce the jam off the one side and put a sill in, and it would probably put back what was there. Right. I, mean, it's the I doors find off that, center, which is yeah, weird anyway. Yeah, I would find that to be a far better compromise. Yeah. Yeah, the door has no historic value. Right. Um, I agree. I, I do have a question on the so on the front elevation from the street. Does it look like there's really any proposed changes? Is that correct? Aside from the uh, ramp that's shown, the, the ramp we're proposing to include a new fence. Um, in photo or in page 36 on the screen, I think it would show. So a new fence and gate um, where the sidewalk is in the lower left of the image, basically to uh, have a, a fence similar to what's in front, extend from the building to the fence on the sidewalk, to just so that we close the sort of front yard space. And that would match the existing? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, I believe, a detail in our drawings showing our design for that, for that fence. I think it's on the site plan also. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, the, the site plan shows the extents. We're going to include a gate so that people can move through there if wanted. Yeah, um, I mean, the rendering is somewhat schematic. I think there is no additional the, the, the detail. Uh, I think that's detail, too would be the design for the fence.
and we had a discussion of this before, earlier <clears throat> when you weren't here. Do you know how this fence is put together? Is it with fasteners or is it welded or, you know? Um, are there screws on the back of it? That I'm not sure. I mean, it's a detail for the future, but just. If you have a cut sheet for how that's going to be done, sure, for the pile. All right, so six, was a six over six window in the back. Um, cut sheet for the fence. Third dish on the third floor dormer. No. So, yeah, I, uh, what's the question in the dormer? Just that it's not accurately shown in the drawings versus what's out there today. The, the photo is different from what's in the drawings. And, you know, th this is what we're seeing right now in that upper left hand corner. And that's so that, that so that there's we just want clarity. We'll show the siding consistency. Right. We, we don't angry. we just don't want, you know, all of a sudden the left siding gets put up there or something, and, which is fine. If that's what you want to do, we just want to know. Yeah, and the intent is to maintain the existing siding and the just paint the graphic of the siding there is erroneous. So you're just going to the, the plywood that's been pushed into those window openings. That's what you're going to leave there. And it, we're talking only about the. Uh, if you look at that page, it's tall window there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's small. Yeah, I mean that that doesn't reflect what's in the what's yeah. really there. That's a special clarity. But I, I go back to staff's question. Are there windows on the interior? Have you been up in that space? In the attic, there are windows okay. that are covered over. You know, Covered over it on the outside in some areas. On the front of the facade, they are true window openings, but with glazing. Um, if you just took that those boards off, would yeah, you can go back windows? to the picture? Just go back, go back to the end of the file. Okay. Wait. This this does not. I do not believe there are any window openings in the attic on this portion of the building. I don't know if we could do some investigating and find out, um, but I do not believe anything behind the side in there is a check of window other than the window that's visible. To me, it just looks like they. I, I will be completely shocked if you don't find windows. Yeah, it's a <laughs> two panel infills, but or remnants at least of jams. And, yeah, I mean, I can see the oval shaped. Right. Um, whether whether that was previously a window or not, I am unsure. So I guess any any condition of an approval tonight, we could even allow you to either simply repaint exactly what is there today, or should you choose to put two windows back in those openings, that could be something you can work out with staff. Of correct. And maybe even the third option of continuing that siding that's consistent. I'm not sure if that's a. I think we just leave it as is. My concern with that is that yeah. you've got the boards here, you know, there would be some reveal here. Right. It's all flat now. Yeah. Put more lap signing over there. Yeah, I'd have to frame the window. Right. <clears throat> I, I would not advocate for altering this. It's either paint or put a window back or get more info. You know. I think we're really close. Any other comments on that? Yeah. Okay. I'll show you what we're going to do. Anticipation. Huh? Something on a try motion. No. <laughs> <laughs> and just do the recommendation for the change of these first and then okay. have an A and B. I'll do one of those. So basically it's it's this what is it? It's the number of the application and then A at the end. We're gonna break it up into two parts. Got it. That would be an approval. Yeah, and the firm. Okay. Um for HR twenty two oh nine over twenty two. Um like to move for to approve the recommendations for a change in use. That would be A. Uh, just A. Um, okay. There is a motion. Is there a second? Nice. Second. There's a motion and now a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Recommendation? Recommendation is, is uh, for change of use is approved. Now on to I think what will be a motion B. 
That's a little trickier. I don't even want to do that. <laughs> Let's see. All work. Just got a lot of caveats. In it, so. Take it step by step. All right. Um, let's see some of this language. In regards to HR hyphen 22 hyphen 09 hyphen 012B, uh, 1663 Brighton Road. <clears throat> That's the wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, it went all the way back. HR 22 hyphen 09 hyphen 022 B 538 East Town Street. Um, with the current condition, I recommend approval with the following additions. Starting at the um, there you go. Looking at the photo. Yeah. Is complicated. Why don't we start with the um, the rear of the building forward? So, <clears throat> in relationship to the uh, repair and damaged area from that corner, there is the uh, the drawings propose a infill of a door on the second story of the rear and the recommendation is to put a mirror window a six over six with infill of brick and sill plate to match that and this is on the uh, east elevation ridge yeah right, it, the it, 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 okay. and you were okay with uh, introducing a new doorway on this first floor correct yeah. and, and it's it, proposed in the in the drawing with, with, I think, the caveat that the introduction of doors on this project are special circumstance with change of use. Consistent with this request and being very unique compared to other cases here. On the north elevation on the third floor. Siding treatment with one window. There are two options to investigate either what's there and if there are windows to light those windows or to paint it as is. And then we would need an updated drawing. Understood. Also within that drawing, the additional details of the small fence piece cut sheets application of, of how they're going to uh, be joined to the property. There is a proposed window to be added there's more than one proposed but i would i would like to see more cut sheets as well being provided for those particular windows um particularly on the north elevation the carriage house okay is that just for clarity is that shop drawings of the windows to be approved by staff yes I'm missing something. I can't remember what the last one was. Do we do the rash others? The well, the the the, 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 the ramp is specific. I can make sure they approval already. 
So they will be a hill to this thing. There's the ones that they want to do in the back. We're going to put a window. Um, I believe there's any. Can, I don't believe there's, there's any other conditions. conditions. Does that check off all the list? And to answer your question, are you saying that the, the, um, the staircase is not really paying significance in the Kennedy Road? Yes, I would offer that as a clarity point. If we could add that as well. If there is a second, we can then just move into a little bit of discussion, just make sure we got this our first right. clear. Tweak the details of it. Second. So there's a motion to go <clears throat> second. Connie, if you want to re read your notes, and I just want to reread your comments on this one as well. So the poured concrete ramp, okay, as long as it does not connect with the front wall of the connector, I think the commission is saying yes. Based on what's in the what's in the drawing package, I think we're all I've seen a lot of heads nodding yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess one thing we really did talk about rear guard carriage house elevation. Go to that photo and see if it's just something that my supervisor and I forty two. Um, and in the drawing, it, it appeared that this window was pretty tall, and we were just wondering, you know, what should it? Should it be the same height as these? Should it be some the same height as these? I think it was. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. And is there any way to tell in relation to the to the far right window down by those down spouts? Is there any way to look at the old photo and get a? Oh, um, look at the very very end with the nineteen seventy four. Yeah, that's the photo. I was the page number fifty. There we go. Yeah. Yes, so uh, yeah, you know what? It's still lower than that. Still wise. My recollection of this, we've seen photos of this window before, is that we were attempting to match the size of the window shown here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm counting, I've counted the bricks. Okay. <laughs> so that's what's already reflected in your drawing. Yes. Okay. Well, then I, I think that would answer that without any adjustment sure. motion. Okay. Is a new door opening appropriate? If so, could it be centered beneath the upper floor openings? And you're saying it's okay where it is. Uh, gas meters, AC condenser, any changes that are going to need those where they are? Just don't Nothing need those. Okay. Metal stairs attain significance. You're saying no. East elevation connector, what is the extent of demolition? We'll talk about that a little bit. It's, um, it's going to be retained. North elevation of the house are the two boarded over windows. We talked about that. Uh, the fabric corn is not shown in the drawings. Any repairs or painting to that? So we'll paint colors eventually. Uh, no painting is proposed to bonus. Or, or any part of the house. Any part any of the other part of the house. Uh, is it appropriate to change a window to a door opening? You're saying yes. And is it appropriate to change two window openings to door openings? You're saying yes. Is it appropriate to change enlarge the smaller window on the east end of the connector? I bet they we didn't really talk about that. Do you want to get clarity on that one? So it's a little window. It's going to match. So you'll have to move some of those. Which, which just clarity? Which which window? This one. <coughs> this one to match these. Correct. Correct. And if um, we we would be okay with the condition that that window opening remain as is, if that's something the commission would find more favorable. Are are you just going to ask a wholesale thing? Are you going to think it's feasible to move all the electric services? There are many electrical services serving this property. Um, we are in the process of reviewing all of that. So we have a hunch that some of the meters will go away. So in light of that, why don't we propose that it remains as is? It doesn't affect the. If, if, if not necessary for change of use in the building, I think leaving this, if we can modify the motion to leave this window as 
current ones would be better. Okay. okay with the second term? Yep. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. And it's okay with the applicant too. So for Rex. Okay, great. So then the motion is then amended. Any further discussion? And if you find something that's totally different, bring it to staff's attention. You have to get to that point when the mechanical use. It will, if there's a long process ahead of this project. Right. So we may see you again. <laughs> we, we will yeah. come back and thank you, James. <clears throat> I may be gone when you're still discussing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, seeing no further need for any further discussion, <laughs> um, I'm going to call for a vote, which all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstention motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Moving on to case number 13, HR 2209023, 420 East 19th Avenue. Maybe I'll launch in your eyes. Hello? Hello. If you could each raise your right hand. Do you both swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do. Wonderful. If you could each also state your full name and association with the property for record. Derek Stage with Ohio State University, a project manager on the side of the project. Okay. <laughs> I'm Brett Wilcox, I'm with Woody Nolan, architects, project manager for the architecture side. Great. Just let Okay, so this is for chimney or smokestack removal, requesting the removal of the existing chimney facing off the courtyard. Uh, the 19, or just to give you some background, the 1909 Indian Noble Junior High School, which is now an elementary school at 140 East 16th Avenue, was the first junior high school in Columbus and in the United States. The new Indian Noble Junior High, the building under review, opened in 1929. The 1927 elevation drawings, which I have somewhere. Uh, show a single original smokestack. There was a, some discussion about there were probably two, so maybe the second one doesn't matter. Um, there's only one. In, 1990, in 1990, the same discussion was going on. The HRC reviewed an application to reduce the height of the smokestack. The commission asked specifically why does the stack need to be lowered and what alternatives are there to lowering the stack and why aren't they being used? That application was tabled. Um, I didn't see anything more about that. The commission has consistently denied the removal of chimneys on houses and commercial buildings. The commission has required rebuilding of chimneys that have been removed prior to approval. Recommend continuing the application to allow time for applicant to submit a plan for repair of the existing smokestack or recommend denial of the application for demolition. What would the applicant like to add? Well, I guess we want to. We were here last time, maybe several months ago. We went through all the plans and elevations, so we'll, we'll skip those for the moment. I think we wanted to focus on, um, you know, a, a significant portion of the budget at this point on the renovation facilities going to significant elements in the building. So we wanted to go through a few of those first, uh, so you're aware of those. But we are we are doing work on the historic areas and doors. Uh, we are doing flat roof replacements. Uh, we are doing slate roof maintenance and cleaning of the existing roofs. Uh, we are doing skylight restoration restoration and uh, cleaning. Uh, we are doing new exterior envelope insulation, uh, which is necessary to meet the code requirements for the building department. Uh, we are doing concrete masonry uh, restoration and cleaning on the building, and we're doing site modifications needed to uh, make multiple ADA entries to the building. So those are exterior uh, additions that we're adding and our significant portions of this budget. Plus, we are doing uh, significant interior modifications as well. Um, they are mostly uh, plaster ceiling, uh, decorative molding, um, stone fireplace restoration, uh, and significant uh, historic elements within the building, uh, plaster restoration of the auditorium and tiered balcony. Uh, we are salvaging and uh, restoring and repurposing select millwork within the building, existing millwork, and we're also doing terrazzo restoration within the building. So uh, a significant uh, amount of budget is going towards that to uh, reopen this facility. But you have anything more? Yeah, so uh, the last time we were here and presented to the commission, um, we also shared that there was not just acquisition um, of the property, but there's been significant investment for the university side prior to hopefully starting construction soon. 
um, of which we tried to outline just kind of high level overview, but just to stabilize this building. And we did put a few pages of, of existing conditions as to what it looked like on the interior when we acquired it. Um, and it, it was rough to say the least, but we've, we've already put a million dollars into it, primarily just the roof and envelope to get it back to as watertight as we can right now with all the deficiencies that exist. Um, another 275,000 in security and cleanup. Um, and the cleanup on the interior of the building was, was pretty intense beyond what was on the exterior. Uh, and then general upkeep of another 175. So beyond that, um, as we started this project and, and this partnership with Metro and OFCC to make this go and actually save this building, the, the construction budget started off at 25 million, right? So very significant chunk of change going into to saving the facility. Um, at SD, which was probably back in April or May, we were about 8.8 .8 over, 8.8 .8 million over budget, right? So and everybody on every project, ourselves included, are dealing with a very tough market right now. So you can imagine we had multiple meetings in, in multiple weeks to try to get this thing scaled back to something that was a project again that we could proceed with, um, which ultimately involved an increase of the budget of $3 million, very significant increase to say the least. Um, at this point, we're just trying to ultimately find the highest and best use of, of Metro and OFCC's funds to create the best facility we can. So uh, that is why we're respectfully coming back in front of the commission and, and asking for input on removal of the chimney so that we can allocate funds to the highest and best use for, for Metro at the end of the day, but also um, the facility. Just for real quick, quick I think on record, you're, yes. you're going to abstain from this case due to a conflict. Yes. So, we didn't hear anything about the chimney. Well, we're requesting removal of the chimney. Um, we've done several render renderings within. Um, we've actually gone to the University Area Commission <laughs> to, get, to seek their advice and approval on the facility. Uh, the chimney itself, um, there is a vertical crack uh, that's about half the distance up that chimney to the to the top of the chimney. Um, it is um, it is leaning to some degree. I wouldn't know how many inches, two or three inches probably. So there has been movement. It has been reduced in size, I think, once or twice. Um, and uh, so, but we are seeking that removal. So that's that's the request. Okay. So my question here would be. Why not consider replacement? Does that right? from based on everything we've done? I, I I just you know I struggle with the fact that the university has owned this a long time, and I do agree you you actually are putting money into the building, but we generally don't look at um, you know there, there's a question about how much of this has been demolition by neglect knowingly for a long time. Um, I do know a little bit you know if I know you did. Acquire it more recently, but you did acquire it knowing there's an issue here. You knew the condition of the property based on your due diligence. I think from the you know the time kind of come before you know people have come before the commission previously. Um, when it comes down to considering budgets, though, then we also have to consider when we, we hear the you know if you're angling for a financial hardship, we have to hold you to the same standard despite being the university as any other single family homeowner. And when you read financial hardship in our code. Despite what we think about it personally, we have to go by the code and the code section really when it talks about financial hardship is going to say, what did you do to consider alternatives um, before making a demolition request? And uh, one of the considerations we have here, though, under financial hardship is, you know, have you considered other avenues for the building itself, even such as not even being its own? Um, and you know, again, we, we have to delicately balance loss of historic material, future reuse of the building. Um, I don't know that you meet the definition of financial hardship for making a case for removal. In my mind, the chimney itself is a character defining feature. We get lots of requests for, for chimneys to be removed. It is it is a an item that is noticeable in the sky on this building from Few different directions. Um, I don't know if there's other things in your program and your project that you could minimize, cut back, scale back. You know, we don't have purview over aspects of the interior of the building. Um, but 
if there's other avenues to consider reducing your budget to be able to save the character defining features, I think they ought to be explored, and that's an important thing. Um, I'm just, of course, one voice or one vote on this commission, and others will have to weigh in here as well. But generally, I don't think I would favorably view removal of the chimney. Um, if it were a temporary measure or a temporary means until it could be reconstructed, there's other provisions for that that can be made, uh, including time restrictions or other things that one yet yeah, might have to go back or salvaging materials. But um, I mean, right now, it, it, you're suggesting just permanent removal. And I, don't, I don't know if I can get behind that as a, as a commissioner. I agree with you. Okay. Curious to the uh, content here, but what we're focused in on in Jimmy today, right? That's correct. Okay. okay. So, with that in mind, as I'm looking through the application, uh, I'm not seeing images of that chimney, like the cracks and the degradation. Also in the report, I'm not seeing, I, I do see the letters here that indicate that there would be a certain cost associated with dismantling the chimney, but I don't see the professional report or anything like that, the engineer. So I'm just wondering who, who was it that reviewed that chimney and came up with that number. Um, who, who were the professionals that looked at that? Sure. And where's that documentation? Yeah, so we, we have that documentation. So um, BCR, which is a very well known and respected restoration masonry contractor, as a specialist, uh, one of their specialties, uh, has assessed it on two separate occasions. Um, one time uh, at the time or prior to acquisition. Uh, but more recently, since I've been involved, they've also looked at it here in the last like, three months mm -hmm. um, at the request of us and then also the construction manager for the project, which is Rusilli. And then they gave input on the building as a whole for all the masonry that needs to be maintained or restored. Um, so be it tuck pointing, limestone, anything of that nature. Um, but that's where this number, this 465, comes from. So and that is the cost to disassemble and reassemble, storing on site, like for like. So demo, complete demolition, complete rebuild, yes. or 65. Okay. And honestly, yeah. that, that number is, is just their professional yeah. guess. Sure. Right? Because oh, there's there's certainly structural issues, obviously, oh, yeah. this, because it's twisty and Understood. there's a, there's things that are going to be found when we open that up. And, and there there is no option for uh, stabilizing and maintaining the activity in their professionals anyhow. Wow. All right. No, there was not there was not a recommendation to that, to that standpoint. No, they didn't. Think that that was going to be possible just because of the nature of the way it's it's break on the interior and exterior, so they didn't see that was a possibility. And I think that was in the report as well. Okay. I mean, one one thing I wanted to go on record on is that I mean, I know there's a, a letter here from Ohio State, um, you know, requesting this or explaining the work. I do know that there's a letter in here from the University Area Commission talking about the height. And of course, they they in here from the University Area Commission make a claim, though I don't know that it's supported that the chimney had been lowered once. I don't know that there's any documentation. There's just an assertion that that's happened, but there's no documentation of that. Um, we can only judge by what we know today. Um, and while it's we again, we have to rule by what's in our code, not personal opinion. So, um, again, what the applicant is doing is proposing demolition of a character defining feature. It's it's not a personal opinion whether we were <laughs> if we didn't have a historic building and we were being developers ourselves. It's what do we what does our code tell us? We have to rule by and review. Is the applicant's request consistent with the code? Um, so, you know, the, the university area commission letter, I don't know if I can place much value on that because it's just an opinion that the building ought to get reused. We, we agree it should get reused. Mm -hmm. We do agree, though, that it's also a notable architect, Howard Dwight Smith, who chose to put a chimney on the building and it reminds in this location. So I would argue equally as much, again, you know, the opposite to retaining. Um, there are additional support letters in here, I think, as well. Um, Again, go back to saving the school, saving those things, but 
we're not arguing that the saving the school is inappropriate, reuse of the school is inappropriate, finding a path forward is inappropriate. But what we are tasked with is when a project is proposed and application is made, did it protect the character defining features and is original material being restored? And if it has to be replaced, it's replaced in kind. Our code book doesn't speak to simply removing it, demolishing it. When it, we have approved demolition, you know, there was a, a request for partial demolition earlier this evening. It was of a piece of a building that was less than 50 years old. We had, we were presented with measured drawings. It was clearly a modern addition and it was not considered character defining. So that is what is different than from this case where essentially this is just still, you know, most people here might consider this character defined. So, um, Stuart, I think you probably are, haven't offered any comments here. What, what's your thoughts on this? I, I think that I agree with um, a lot of the details that were said by the chairman, and I think it is a very important architectural element of the structure. And I think that the sensitivity of how we handle this can be taken and in, in out of context for other projects. And I think that the fairness of you know, Columbus City Code 311611 talks about maintaining these things as they were. And, and if there's another opportunity to discuss about finances, that it's a whole different ballgame. So um, I, I'm in favor of, of trying to maintain this structure as it is. And if it, if it requires that it need to be removed and built in kind, because of the unsafe conditions or the structural integrity, then I think that's the the idea of, of what we're trying to preserve here with that fabric. <laughs> Any other further thought? Uh, so the option is we either so we so we are I guess I'm hearing we would not approve demolition, right? So do we table for the applicant to come back with some options or just how does it work? Like I, I, it's it's always up to the applicant okay. what what they're you know we always motions are always made in the affirmative. Right. I generally am getting the sense that there may not be enough support for passage of, of the request. Um, we can do a continuation and allow you time to provide additional information of why we should you know, continue, or sorry, or why, why would she honor the request? If you believe there's something you haven't provided. Um, one thing that I think we've heard universally here is that there's not, you know, we've got a photograph of this, but we don't have drawings of conditions of, of the chimney itself up further up close or, you know, other rational reasons besides just budget why you should remove this. I mean, maybe there's, there's something you know that we don't. Um, that you'd like to help strengthen your case. So if you'd like time, that's fine too. So I think no matter what happens, because of the shape that it's in right now, especially the upper two thirds, it's going to have to come down as part of whatever measure happens. So would an option to disassemble it and store the bricks be on the table for to advance this conversation so our project and hopefully keep moving while we try to figure out if we can find that funding to to reconstruct it? Well, I, I, part of the request for alterations of projects, though, usually, you know, including demolition, it usually includes providing proof of financing for a project. And that's actually a line, and again, it's, it's actually outlined in the context of the code. So if there's questions about not even having financing to put it back, I would have to question why we honor sort of allowing the demolition to move forward in the first place. With the um, hopes that it would come back. Right, right. I think what what is missing is is adequate documentation for the request all the way around. But I think when we get down to it, I, I believe there's a, a pretty good understanding of the position that it it may not favorably go in the direction that you want. So even if we come back with these documentations, is that just spinning your wheels more? So you know. Does it make sense to really, you know, tackle the pink elephant in the room and say, okay, we're going to rebuild it just like it is and go from there. So we could alter your application to include that. 
or we could continue it um, or we could vote on it as it's presented. Um, I, I would appreciate a continuation. Uh, so moved. Second. Hearing a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. So what would that continuation, what would be the next step for a continuation? What would so continuation, for? it'll appear back on our next agenda again, so long as you next continue month. to stay in contact with Connie or the specific preservation officer um, that will they can stay continued for as long as needed. However, just you with that I know that you're making progress. Sure. Understood. Otherwise so it's just, just matter get of, it so it's just a matter of the next application and stay in contact with you with it. Yes. That would one be okay for the agenda again. Yeah. And I'll follow up with a letter with these comments and yes. when I would need to get those. I'm not I'm not sure the application deadline is tomorrow, which would mean you would have you would, you would have a week since you're here. You would have a week. That's not a lot of time, but you would have till like next Thursday to submit. Guys, next Thursday. And this is a pretty special situation. So, you know, anything that you feel is important, whether it meets that deadline or not, the deadline is being able to be presenting that information to us in a timely fashion to discuss it at our business meeting and so forth. But. Um, by all means, um, whenever you have other information you want to submit, it just is a matter of the timeliness of how we review that. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are on to case number 14, 2068 Luca Avenue. Good evening. You can raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? Yes. Okay. If you could state your full name and association with the property for record. I'm Renee Shalom. I'm the owner of 2068. I think. Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. This is to replace um, non original sunroom windows. Um, a 1961 real estate photo. Um, and card describes the sunroom as having thermal hanging windows, indicating they are not original at that time. Uh, there are no no photos of the original sunroom windows, so we don't know what the the makeup of those windows were. Or the whole mix of plate glass. Well, I'll start by saying the original uh, submission was for a, a large unit um, that was uh, factory mold, which is not. I mean, they were final, so all of that was not approved. So she, the owner, has worked to um, provide information that is windows from the approved list and that match the character of the house more closely. So the the proposed mix of plate glass, casement, and double hung windows provides the open view designed by the homeowner, but is also compatible with the existing window pipes and munted patterns. The proposed windows are from the approved windows list, and the windows will be individual units separated by built mullions covered by wood trim. And for those reasons, recommend approval of the application as submitted. Does the applicant have anything to add? Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to say is. Um, I believe that the original uh, window submission, the information, and the and the new uh, submitted information about the new windows that they would really look almost exactly the same. But the vinyl clad uh, with the aluminum outside. Would have been uh, less than seven thousand dollars. The new windows from the approved list, the estimate is eighteen thousand two hundred and thirty dollars. Um, I've lived in the home for twenty years. I'm one of the few remaining homeowners on the south rim of Iuka between Sun and Fourth. I take care of my property. I love living there. I want the house to look historic like it does. 
um, these windows perform wonderfully in their protecting the home. The problem is I can't see through them. They've lost their seal. I can afford to do this. Um, I think a comment was made at the, at the business meeting. Well, if people can't afford to do it, then maybe they shouldn't live there. I've endured living there because it is rental all around me. It is a red cup zone. And I think perhaps there should be a formula in the future to look at that, to see what what is around a home such as mine. And I'm not asking for it to look terrible or cheap. I'm asking to improve it. And this, frankly, is very cost pro prohibitive. How historic is it looking now with fogged in windows? That's kind of what I'm left with. I either pay $18,230 for the same and actually better, better material, longer lasting types of material by a company that would have made them in Ohio, made in Ohio, not somewhere else. So I'm just saying, I'm hoping in the, for even for this month, for my case, um, I think other considerations should be looked at. Um, I had no, you know, I was, I, I called historic, uh, the historic office to, to get some guidance. And, um, and so here, here I am. Thank you. I, I believe in this, I believe in the goal of this, but I think there should be some considerations for how the rest of the neighborhood looks looking at the auditor site to see all the rental properties all, all around me. And I'm looking at an, an, an aluminum sided house right next door, slapped on aluminum, silver aluminum storm windows over the existing windows. I don't think they made a call. Um, it's not to lessen what's happening in the neighborhood, but I think we need to be realistic and still maintain, uh, I put a lot of money in my house. I, I'm not gonna be able to do the other things now if I have to go with this. And um, I, I'm feeling kind of like this isn't fair. There's gotta be a better, a better way and still, it's a, it's a fabulous house, but they take money, these old houses. They take a lot of money. Uh, like I say, the vinyl and aluminum windows that I originally proposed, I have a very reputable window fella, and I, I trust him with my life based on uh, other work he's done. Uh, they'll look the same. Somebody going by that, they're going to look the same. So, so the condition of the windows has the, the fogging or the breakdown of the seals between the two panels. Yes. Is the main issue. Yes. Is the structure of the, the framing, is it in pretty good shape? According to my window expert, yes. Okay. And have you perhaps even inquired about having just that, that whole glass portion repaired? There are there are local companies that can do that, and I'm not sure if that's even been discussed. Uh, we did we did discuss it with my window fella, and um, he felt the cost would be even higher. They are large, like 119 inches wide, and the reason why I wanted to go with a picture window, a smaller picture window, is to have a double hung in each of the three sections. And that's because there's no central air in the house. There's no ductwork. And for ventilation, if I'm going to put thousands of dollars into replacing windows that are protecting the house, but you just can't see through them, um, I would like to, what I consider an upgrade by putting double hung in to get some ventilation in the house. And 
experience the wonderful breezes that I get from from the ravine and to be able to see the beautiful view. But I can't now, so I either have to pay eighteen thousand dollars plus or not see out the windows. So uh, uh, I I don't know how you get another company on the approved list. Uh, what that procedure is. Well, the the <clears throat> let, let's start with a few of the key points here, which is again we we appreciate you being a, a homeowner of a historic home. We are always I think stewards. In time, we don't own them. They sort of own us mm -hmm. for a period of time, house to house. Um, the we have to rule obviously by the code. So when we're challenged with what is in the code, we don't make up the code. That's what is passed by city council and the voters and other people here. We are simply here to view does a applicant meet the code. So we don't actually set the parameters about when somebody presents us with a, a financial hardship case, we have to just refer to the section of the code that talks about financial hardship, um, which the, the bar or the definition that, that is in there is set high, um, but it also talks about, you know, there is a way to meet that, but it does provide serious things. I, I don't I hope no, you know, bar us if we, if somebody did say directly sort of, if you can't afford it, you shouldn't live there. I think it's, it's, it, it's, Pardon? I say you did. Okay. Actually, well, it's it's uh, 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 in the the code. It does say specifically, though. It says you must consider the sale of the property as a way of of meeting financial hardship requirements. And that's not something you make up. That's not something I make up. That's actually just a section of the code that literally is in there. Uh, that's not saying specifically you shouldn't live there. That's what's in the law that we're given to actually administer. Um, so when it comes down to that, you know, we, we have to ask you, do you meet the requirements for that? When it comes to the specific windows on the pre approved window list, that is to help expedite uh, approvals and give some sort of common ground for approvals uh, for windows that we have seen that consistently sort of meet the level of detail and quality and character of historic windows. Um, and that has been reviewed by many commissions, just not ours alone. There's actually many commissions that have reviewed those. Um, there are, there is the ability to get windows approved that are not on the pre-approved list. Um, there is a process, you can talk about that with Connie further. Um, there have been issues or or times when a window is not appropriate for a particular historic building or historic home. Maybe it's not of the right era or genre. Um, maybe it's a mid-century home, for example, and it needs something very specific. I don't know if we have windows, for example, that meet you know mid-century aesthetics. Um, so there may be instances where an exception is made or a window is approved in what we call a test case scenario and a test case is actually something that then staff follows up on. We see them installed. We receive pictures of those windows when they're installed later on. And we look at have they held up and done what they're supposed to do within a short amount of time. Um, and are they sort of worthy to, to you know, be considered in the future? Uh, but they're one off cases or scenarios. Um, we never deny anybody's ability to ask for a specific window. We just may need additional information on the window itself. What is the construction detail, the window, the jam detail, the head detail, the sill detail? Um, how does it actually, how's the window come together on visual components? And is it, or does it match um, an existing window it may be replacing? Um, in the case of your house, I would say that though we agree that those windows are modifications to the house, if we're looking at or thinking about new windows in place of that modification because that modification was done prior to it being considered a historic district we would probably look for cues on the original house of other windows like how are the how do the details of the other double hung windows come together um, so those kinds of things actually impact the decision or when we're, we're weighing 
you know, what this much was. I think Stuart was a, brought up an excellent question here is, is there any ability to repair those windows? Because quite honestly, repairs can be usually generally cheaper. Rebuilding a window can be sometimes cheaper and get you what you want, big picture windows without thinking about replacement. Um, so I hope that helps shed some additional light onto the topic. There is a section in the code though on windows and window replacement um, as well, that then also when we think about a window being replaced, we have to review that or consider that, that section of the code when we're considering applicant's request. I would like to pursue, you know, the test window option or some other using a company that is not on the list. So whatever the process is. Well, you have to, what you have to do is bring in a, uh, a sample window, so physical sample window. Um, but I'll just say ahead of time that I, I, we have not seen, we've seen a lot of windows. We haven't seen any vinyl windows at this point that has um, the dimensions and detail that we would look for in windows that, at, that actually ended up on the list. And that would have to do with the width of the styles and rails do you have mitered corners instead of flat corners? And there are things like that that we would look at. But the, the separation where the two windows meet, uh, how deep is that? So those are the things we're going to look at. We haven't seen a vinyl window yet that, that has those details. Want to bring in a five, you know, a, a sample next month, do that. But, but again, I would say that I think the commission would have to hold fast on that they couldn't be one unit, you know, they still have to be separate units. Uh, not not a center window with with two windows, it's just one unit and separate units with wood. So that's definitely possible. If the if the one unit has the wood in between, what I what don't is the, the I don't know if there's feature there or what is I don't know if there's there. been any made like that. I think what we're trying to get at is that even a new window, um, there have to be certain proportions and elements for it to be approved to get on the list, right? So if I go home and take, you know, I don't live in a historic home, but if I bring my window, it's a really nice expensive window, and I give it to Connie, it won't get approved because it just doesn't meet the proportion. It's a very contemporary window. So I think it's, it's a little bit of that and gets a little bit detailed and maybe your window person wants to talk to Connie, that's an option because they might understand, you know, the details that Connie's talking about in terms of end conditions, width, thickness. Well, I'm a union carpenter. Okay. I think I have some knowledge of those yep. features. That's what I'm trying to grasp. I look downtown and I see these wonderful old buildings with new modern windows put in them and they look really good. I'm, I'm looking for that kind of uh, approach outside the box um you know that's what we're looking at at our city all over the place wonderful old buildings with new windows we look out the window here you see new windows in these buildings i think it's wonderful it's acknowledging the past and um, putting efficient those windows. probably aren't historic buildings right we're looking at i mean our charge is just historic whatever falls in the criteria of historic historic are, are there any historic areas down downtown there are some mm -hmm. Yeah. So not all. There's a lot of areas of downtown that actually don't fall in historic districts. And quite honestly, some of the hardest cases are we get a lot of people that come forward and say, but my next door neighbor did it. And quite often one of the next door neighbors aren't even in the historic district. And the one person has the home that is in the district. And it's just because it's next to it or, you know, the, that there's in you know, lies the challenge. I, I think one of the things we we're trying to do is to sort of honor the request to allow the glazing to continue if you're not going to rebuild the window um, because it was it was an unenclosed porch originally. So if we go back to where we were originally when the hollow was built. We don't know that. Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't know that for sure. OK, um, was to, to say, OK, probably what what would be the closest thing you could get to that would be sort of in line with it? We know that the big, broad window picture wasn't right for that particular type of home. But and I'm, and I'm trying to put in something that is something okay. that matches my dining room windows or the upstairs windows. Mm -hmm. That's what we are trying to. 
trying to uh, trying to achieve so what year was the home bill uh, 1911 <clears throat> thank you we, we've but, seen a, but the porch was added on in some unknown point we've seen a lot of like porches when they've been enclosed it was just enclosed with a series of double windows and i think that's where our discussion went during the course of the business meeting was instead of having one large picture window or one large picture window flanked by two double hungs, could you take some cues from the house and just simply have an opening that has a series of four double hung windows? Because there's a lot of sleeping porches that have windows like that. I believe sleeping porches were typically on the second floor. Sometimes yes, some you know they they were they were modules you could obviously just buy as a kit depending on your home builder. Um, but in that case, you know when there are enclosed porches, what you know they'd have volumes, they'd have a lot more things to that would would break break the window up itself. Um, not too many examples of just very large picture windows. That's what we were trying to do, is with the double hungs, and with the number of lights to match the other windows in the house. That was one of the uh, elements, aside from is the window appropriate, is the actual application of the windows still, I guess there's some interpretation that's required about what's intended for the installation. So I'm, I'm still wondering a little bit about what the actual detailing looks like. There's some uh, text here which describes, but I'm not clear as to actually what the intention is because there's no drawing that really indicates how those windows are being proposed to be installed. So I'd have a hard time even commenting on the installation of the appropriate windows that we're saying are already approved because I don't have a drawing or anything that indicates because we're not doing a like for like. So there's no like elevation or even a sketch which would show what the detailing would look like. Since I sent some drawings in, or the individual windows. Yeah, the, the, the individual windows are helpful. <clears throat> but the, the orientation and how they're aligned in the structure. Actually, how they get installed, and because you're talking about breaks, so what is the spacing, the details? I think it's in the. Do you have a drawing? The text in here. I'm sorry. Do you have a drawing of that with you? Maybe I we didn't get it. It's the same. That's up there. So, and in the uh, text of the um, the drawings that were supplied, it talks about um, what's up there. That the, there will be one double hung in each each of the picture windows, and in the two larger picture windows, the double hungs would be a double hung, a column, and then another d double hung, and that is to align with the living room so that um, a breeze perhaps could come into the house. I think that what you are describing is what we need as a drawing is what I'm hearing, because we need it again, not for ourselves. I mean, obviously you want to see, but also for record. I think it's described in the text. In no, it needs to be drawn. Drawn. Drawn, okay. so we can see. The, the, the issue comes down to is, is uh, when an inspector goes out in the field or something, or a neighbor says, hey, so-and-so replaced their windows. We don't have something that an inspector can kind of use to gauge what it is, is what was approved or what the intent is and the understanding by us the same as what they then also look at. And also then is pretty clear across the board then what, what it is we're actually approving. I mean, it does say he, he included um, installation includes adding two two by four studs in between visual windows and double on windows. But you're right, I mean, it doesn't say it's like what trim would go over that then would it be you know, five inch Trim or uh, with the two two by fours, it would be covered then that space. Yeah, it tells the size of the uh, double hung windows, six light grids on both sashes, one picture window on the front, and gives the size. With the mullet yeah. between, would this would they? Would they be moved this way? Would the trim over the volumes be this way? Or would they be? I think that's one of the 
So to have that width and so you want another post that wide? Well, I'm not sure. I think that's what we're asking. What's yeah, that, proposed. That's, that, that's why we're saying a drawing is, is okay. better than the text description. So that way there's not an interpretation of words and how that gets applied. The installation includes adding two two by four studs between fixture windows and the double hung. That's, that's why. Yeah, so that's the last scenario. It might be a little bit you know, more narrow than what's there. Yeah, I think it will be. Yeah. So there's more, more window. It, and also, I is, as I had asked earlier, if you had considered it, it might be worth a phone call or two, to a, to a manufacturer in town. And there are a few glass companies. Obviously, we can't necessarily recommend one over another, but I'm very familiar with a few that that do such projects, and they will rebuild exactly a new thermal pane to fit that opening. And perhaps if you even, have to just replace them as picture windows, which were not original. I probably won't do it because the whole point is to be able to see out of the windows, which that would that would accomplish, but also to have ventilation in the house. I mean, to put thousands of dollars into putting glass back in. That, that's clear. That's clear. Right. But no ventilation. Makes sense. Would, I mean, would you guys do that in your home? That's a personal choice, I guess. That's that's right. really not yeah, the point here. Um, so I think historic structure, and we're we're you know you have a 1961 photo that shows some pretty clear evidence that is consistent with what's the current condition. So um, all I was suggesting was perhaps a phone call to see if it's even worthwhile. You might find that it's not nearly as costly as what you're considering. Or perhaps yes. even you know again, as Meg was saying, you know, it's personal consideration of what you're wanting or needing there, but perhaps I mean, leaving them like this, if, you, if it's possible to repair them, putting sashes on the, on the side elevation so you get, you know, some cross ventilation there. Sashes on the, on the side, on the two sides, you know, uh, double hops. So, that you, so the end this would porch. be solid, but either end versus fit, that side, but the ends would be operable. So I can put double hums on the end, but not I mean, it's considered, you know, right. as far as the expense. Well, and I don't think she was suggesting that you could do that. This is just, we're just talking in my yeah. Right. Well, consider, consider other yeah. options. We, yeah. we, we could not be the designer or the applicant or the architect. We can only help guide you in coming up with or proposing a solution. So we want to be clear that we're not, we're not actually providing the designer. Right. We can, we can suggest things that we think maybe are appropriate, but there might be about five different ways to achieve yeah, some of okay. this. I think um, going back to the business meeting, if I can give a little bit of clarity, I think one of the things was that um, approach, because it's easier to show sometimes off of a picture, was is that if there was any way to consider the fact that, you notice there was a detail here, which is there was a wider column here, for kind of a piece that had been built in that lower section. And by the way, these grills are great. Whatever these, I assume they open, do they open up for air? Inside, there's a, a wooden, of cover and they do open okay. about four to six inches. But if you have furniture in there, mm -hmm. then you can't open those. So we, we noticed that there was, you know, your bigger post here, bigger post on the end, kind of a secondary tier of width here, and then a very smaller kind of more thin piece here. And one could almost from an architectural perspective envision sort of mimicking this width from here here. It kind of this sets a precedent for dividing here, and you know you could almost envision filling that in with four windows that are double hung. That almost when you drove by the house, it would look like hey, they had windows on this house originally on this porch. Or it's just a dynamic, you know. As, as just saying, is there a rhythm? Is there anything that helps inspire anything? And maybe where there could be flexibility is you know looking at the front image of your house. It wasn't like you had six divided windows over six divided windows. In fact, well, although we weren't, we weren't quite sure if they were all divided like windows, but you know, could you allow for maybe a, a one light window with a six divided over the top of it, or something to get you a little bit more view out to the ravine without having to divide it up into millions of little little lights? 
Um, but there could be, you know, what what I think we lacked is just some some drawing that just showed us what what was going on. Okay. Just ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, we had submitted drawings with the first the first submission. There are drawings. I don't know if they're. They were drawings in in the. Well, it showed how the yeah how the windows went right. in, but not in the in the. But room. not actually on the house or on the porch itself. So even if she took, you know, I mean, you know, just to illustrate, took a picture mm -hmm. and drew on the picture, you know, something like that. I mean, that's or, not a Photoshop it. And it, if you're a partner, you, you probably have some drawings together. So, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the, the, the window, the window contractor supplier may be able to help or assist with that too. Same with the so it, does, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, these aren't. Good enough, then, is what you're saying. Do we, do we have an example that we could show her of like an elevation, what an elevation looks like yeah. drawn? We could, I could yeah, I, I know what that looks like, but can, do you have the um, do you have the original submission? No, I don't have anything out there. But it's, it shows what you have there. It was a you know just a bank of windows. Yeah, bank of windows. One but it didn't show it in the structures. But I mean, you all are experienced. You would know what that looks like in the house right yeah that's the i don't i don't think we're gonna change our mind about wanting to see that so i don't think it's okay. worthwhile discussing uh what we're asking for is to actually see what the proposal looks like so we can comment on it otherwise we're all going to be interpreting i think you're what, right yeah. yeah so we'll continue this for next month if that's agreeable or would, or would we want a different action today uh I am um, trying to move forward, trying to to get this project done. I have no idea it would take this long. I'm trying to I take care of my 95 year old father in another state, so I go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea it would take this long for a replacement of windows. Um, so whatever I mean, if I what can I get on the test list or? Uh, Bring a window in. Uh, uh, I'm and, and again, not to be insensitive, but keep in mind, it's very unlikely that a vinyl product can meet those standards. Very unlikely. Just so that when you're doing this, I don't want to set you up for another headache. Okay. Um, just to be completely transparent and try to save your time because that's important. Okay. But, so saying I should spend eighteen thousand two hundred thirty dollars. And I didn't say that. Will you? Okay. Well, let me ask. Can can you uh, approve the proposal then the for the for the windows where you don't as, feel we have enough information as submitted? We can do that conditionally. So we could say yes, let's do that. But we, the condition would be those drawings would have to go to staff. The thing so you don't have to come back to us with the drawings. Right. I'll submit the drawings. So we would okay. conditionally approve it, and then you give the drawings to staff that show the layout, how they're put together, and, and then that could maybe move that forward. For you. Okay. I appreciate that. You, you'd like to go that direction? Yes. I've got to take care of my family. Okay. One big step. Just 14, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, for HR dash uh, 22 dash 09 dash 024, um, I need to approve. Uh, sorry. I need to approve with the conditions to. Uh, this to staff approval uh, with uh, provided drawings being um, given to some. Was there also a condition of reviewing the window? It sounded like that was an avenue. 
Well, no, to, if you're brewing it just the way it is, then it's from a pre approved list. So it's yeah, really so it's like an aluminum clad, which is on a proof list. We just need to know how oh, okay. they understood yeah. the location. Yeah. We can go in a couple different ways. So, okay. yeah, yeah, that's what we're like. Okay. Very good. Second. So there's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? So, since the applicant had to, to leave, um, you would notify her that yeah. this is a conditional approval and yeah. okay. All did that. Sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? I'm going to go on the record as abstention. I just did not feel comfortable with the amount of information provided. Motion passes. Okay, on to the next case here, 1397 Bright Road. Well, thank you for the patience. Oh, no problem. Uh, we were on schedule for a while. Yeah. <laughs> if you could raise your right hand. Do you each swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. You can each state your full name and association with the property for record. Brenda Parker, architect. Okay. Susan Dietz, co owner. Wonderful. David Dietz, co owner. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so this is to remove an existing rear addition. Um, actually, two additions uh, with the original service and sleeping porch, and an addition to that first floor service porch. Construction of a new single story addition over cross space for a new under suite. Mm. That's not correct. Sorry, I didn't write this one in. <laughs> uh, construction of a new second floor floor screen porch. Construction of a new three story three car detached garage with covered walkway. Um, a review of sandboard maps indicates that the house was not built in 19 yet, built in 1901, and the service porch, the second floor sleeping porch, was in place at least since 1921. Uh, the one story addition to the service porch was added after 1951 based on sandboard. September 1 business meeting comments include. Uh, sleeping and or service porches are rarely approved for demolition. Demolish the new construction should reflect the original. Uh, can any parts of the existing sleeping and service porch be retained or repaired and modified for current use? Uh, too much of the history of the house is proposed for removal. Uh, when was the glass block installed? It's just a general question because you saw it was there. Um, I think I saw it was, was there. I found a picture there. In 2007, it's been there at least since 2007. That's actually a good view of the side there that shows another question, uh, the foundation. The porch probably was on Rick Pierce originally, uh, and so uh, that foundation has been there at least since 2007, probably a lot uh, earlier than that. Other questions at the business meeting uh, the, or, or, or comments. Uh, the proposed garage roof is similar to the house, so appears appropriate. A three car garage can be appropriate in this neighborhood. And is a covered walkway appropriate for the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. This is conceptual, provide comments for conceptual review, no action required. Oh, it's there now. What would the applicant like to have? That's correct. Okay. I will let the homeowners do most of the talking, but I think the general nature of the project is this is a house that the owners want to age in place. So the whole goal for the project is to add a first floor owner's suite, um, as well as kind of a mudroom drop zone. And that entails kind of renovating the kitchen because the kitchen is in that first floor addition um and then there is no garage so a new garage to accommodate workshopping cars um the walkway you know is is a, a lot about just you know weather protection and coming in and out of the from the garage to the house and then i'll let the kind of the other elements 
And just sorry to interrupt it because you did ask about interior photos of what it looked like. So this is what is left of the. Uh, That's the kitchen. Yeah. And those and that beam or that cabinet or whatever it is you want to call it, that leaks. Very badly. Very badly. And so where does the brick part of the house stop? Behind the cabinets. The At the back. Yeah. Of the Behind like where the fridge is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In, yes. So this would have been a service porch. Right. Yeah. So oh, this is that addition. That the image, that historical image you have uh, is interesting. Because you, you can, it's very defined, you know, the which piece was added and which piece was original. And it, it was interesting how the second floor doesn't really align. It doesn't. It's all like that. Hodgepodge. Yeah. 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 So essentially, you want to change the footprint. You want to make the lower level bigger. Correct. Right Correct. And then how does that, I'm, I'm looking at your drawings. There's a lot going on here. So we'll just there is. <laughs> so are you anticipating that you're going to keep a similar footprint of the upper sleeping porch, or are you going to change that as well? We're actually proposing to make it deeper and wider um, so that it can actually be a usable, a really usable space with furniture up there. The sleeping porch right now, I think it's about six and a half feet or so. And so it's just an awkward dimension to, to use it. So we're kind of taking that, if the sleeping porch will say is an even seven feet, we're kind of taking that in and then stretching it out. So it, the volume still kind of reads like a sleeping porch, we're just um, enlarging it so, to make it more usable. And then the bedroom piece is, you know, stepped back in from that two-story volume. So they, when the sort of the new sleeping porch comes back on the second floor, it's just screens though around? It's the just screens, place. yeah. It seems it doesn't read right. It will become usable. It's not usable right now. You have a serious step down and the floor is not safe. So basically you want to put the porch back on to help the massing, throw an addition on behind that, and then make the, the right. upper a little bit bigger anyway. So yeah. it's already there. Yeah. Um one of the kind of one of the challenges, so um <clears throat> having been a bride group homeowner with a sleeping porch once myself and actually having visited a lot of my neighbors one of the challenges is some for some reason the sleeping porches have decayed at a faster rate than the houses and that is notable in the area i, I could never figure out why but i've also looked at behind the walls and floors of some of them and i think they were built on they were kits as far as i could tell too and i think they were very engineered kits within finite you know we, we talk about engineering products today they they engineered these things sort of on a a weight limit load that was pretty pretty small margin i think um i do like the fact that you're trying to reintroduce the sleeping porch again back you're not though you're proposing to remove the original fabric of the house you're trying to bring it back, rebuild it, but rebuild it with new depth to it. Um, there is a there. There's a lot of mucking with the original fabric on the back of the house, which is you know what what do we do to kind of get to bring it back, but just bring it back right. The only question I have would might be is if you would consider any tweaks to sort of include. Uh, Going back to what would be page number eight. This kind of creeps into the, on both sides of the house. It's just this this chip lab kind of uh, siding or the smaller profile mm -hmm. horizontal siding. I didn't know if you could actually sort of raise your screened in sections to have this still run around the house. To kind of have an e-wall. Would you guys be on board with that? Just because of how, how big of an e well, I mean, I, I think there's probably code ramifications, by the way, just on, I don't know. We, it, we would have rails. And we'd have rails. Screens. Yeah. The, one of the reasons we want the porch is because some ridiculous. We have cats and yeah. they're indoor cats. So we want them to be able to still it's explore fair. the outside. 
and having that meanwhile with their fat old cats. <laughs> um, they just, it would make it harder for them to see, but that's, that's why we were thinking all screens. Um, I did the same with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not opposed to just the screens, especially up top where there's windows right now, if you felt that was good how enough. About, how about this? If that ship lap, narrow lap, was just on the side, and the back we were able to have screens all the way down. Facing onto the backyard. But would it be as evident unless you're looking from the back? Kind of an interesting would idea. Would that work on Facebook? We would be okay with that. I mean, a knee wall, my, and I have some woodworking, knee well, wall is not structural. Yeah. So we could easily, you could easily put up a needle on the side. We could do both sides, and then to the back would be full screen. That way, there's unobstructed views, floor to ceiling. Yeah, but I think the porch is relatively intact. Yeah, because now I think we had evidence that was really shine right. Oh, I think we'd have to. To repair the porch is rebuilding the porch. Right. That's it. Yeah. In kind. But once you, how we once you right. And that's what we're right. trying to do in in kind. And that's. Yeah. yeah. There's not clear evidence about what is actually 100% historic and it's been messed with so right. much. The right. one question I have for you, though, is it, the roof line. So if you go to page two, it's an image kind of looking all the way down. Zoom in back to the porch. So the, the roof line looks like it extends in just a continuation mm -hmm. all the way over, right? So are you mm -hmm. proposing that you're, because it looks like a hip roof in your elevation, like it's going to be amended, and then the, the new roof actually steps down. Uh, just want to clarify what, what you're thinking is going to happen at that roof line. So I was, so. I was thinking more like this is an addition and we wanted to kind of bring the cornice line down below the existing cornice. That that was the thinking sure. behind the drawings. And so it's just a simple flat roof that tucks in under the existing cornice. And then you, but if we wanted, if you guys were okay with just us extending that cornice line, um, because I don't know if there's any photos from the back to know. It's, it's, flat, it's, over the, the, it's flat over the sleeping porch. The hip yeah. ends at the brick. If you can see right there, the hip end dies into the brick, and the sleeping porch is, I'm going to assume, had, had not been up there because it's 20 some feet up in the air. Sure. Um, it is a slow, uh, a very shallow raked ceiling or roof. It's not a steeply pitched roof. And right. in fact, a lot of the sleeping porch kits had a metal roof. Top of them just dovetailed in under it a may, first course of sleep. I have no windows back there, and no idea. I'm not climbing that. Hmm. I don't blame I, I, for me, the big thing is this is sort of when you like look at this photo or even that photo is, is maintaining the gutter line sort of as is, even in a rebuilt thing. I, I think that's a critical thing just from a, a historic perspective. I mean, I think. On the side of the house, it's clear that the dental, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the walking continues. even continues. Yeah. I suspect the ones on the back side of the house were probably just shot at a point and they took them off and they never yeah. put it back on. That's just the story of a lot of bright run homes. I'm completely on board with that approach. Again, it's the game of, you know, not, not doing this as a professional in the historical world. You kind of have to do the best you can. That's why we're kind of here for concept. Mm -hmm. This is conceptual. Mm -hmm. Open to okay. it towards a conversion. We yeah, we tried to do a pretty good package so we could get all the feedback. I just assumed with a larger project like this that we were um, going to need to make some adjustments. Okay. What about the windows? Uh, there's both one large window. Sometimes what the commission will do is, is ask that you know the smaller windows or whatever was there. Uh, be sort of reflective, of course, I'm not sure if those are the windows. But I think if you go back to the older window where the painting is brown, brown, I think it's a different window. That's, yeah. Are you talking about the little tiny window yeah. from the sleep? Yeah, you can see that 
can't be you think that, right. Do you think that those were just maybe screened on the top too? Or I'm not sure. I just think those were hot spots too. Yeah. The photo, the photo was kind of wonky there. It's never <laughs> right, but our, we only have the one window now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the third. No, oh, because the one's kind of like it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't think. I mean, I think they. It's wood. I mean, I don't even think. It's just that's a new. That's a new view for me. I've never seen. That. That's why I say it's interesting to see this historic photo. Oh, it's a little different even now. Yeah. Oh, if you yeah. Go if you go back to, it's been cleaned up quite a bit. Page, you know, two and four are what it is. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I guess, guess I guess really it's just all kind of painted out. Mm -hmm. But those windows are still there. Yeah, they the don't. Ones, those windows don't seem consistent with any of the other detailing. Yeah. The yeah. Structure. And that is even an old picture, because the alleyway door in the bottom right hand corner. Oh, okay. No, that's not the. Yeah, this, and there's a window there. Okay. This is right when you bought. This okay. When you bought the property, they just bought it this summer in June. In June. So when you talked about the glass block, they they didn't even know that that was an issue. Oh, I didn't even know. Oh boy. Now. It is. We did not do it. Although it makes the basement nice and bright, I like that. And secure. Yeah, they would have wanted you to do a, a an actual window and then the the, the grills kind of the rod protection across um there, there was some also discussion i think connie said of the appropriateness of the covered walkway um and what, what were the other comments that was just it you know it was kind of just a brief i i, I think i i had asked uh, the need for it but so one of the things I I have to give you kudos for, by the way, is the garage pitch here with the roof. That's a pretty good pitch, and it matches the original house, which I'm glad to see you're doing that. Um, rather than one single door and a, a double wide door, this is probably a precedent case for having three individual doors. Fine. Um, the Brian Road homes were all a little bit more elaborate and had some more elaborate garages. You're saying it should be three yeah, doors? So I think it should be three doors. We're right. at the zoning threshold of our garage size. And so if I stretch it out to get that individual door, we're going to have to ask for a variance. We're trying to avoid that. Do you have a variance anyways because of lock coverage? Yeah. No. No. No, we've are, I've already vetted this out because I have a department. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know. Sweet. Well, uh, and, and my only request well, because they could yeah. have a 25 percent rear yard and the detached garage can take up 45 percent of that or whatever that it's 25 percent rear yard and, and the detached garage can be 45 but it's not detached anymore yeah they should because uh the, i don't think the walkway the walkway is not attached attached has to be to habitable space that's their definition of attached you might want to check well they yeah they, they saw it okay. mm -hmm. uh, my, my question regarding the walkway was is is um Sometimes when you put port cochers or, or walkways like this so high, they don't really actually, it is adding expense to your project. It's adding a certain elegance or stateliness probably in your mind, but it's actually not going to protect you from the elements when it's set so high, just because you get a little bit of breeze and you're going to get wet still, the snow's still going to blow under it. So um, if there's a way to soften your impact. Yeah, but when I plant wisteria on it, and the wisteria <laughs> hangs down. Well, but here's the, here's the other problem with that. So when you put that wisteria in there, and the birds come, <laughs> and it comes down through. Then the cats yeah. come through the screen on the back porch. Exactly. <laughs> now you're chasing the older cats that may or may not have a weight issue. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I, did, I just did want to bring it up that, that it was set so high. I just thought if your goal was to have a covered walkway, to me, I was like, well, a little bit of wind, and you're getting wet from your walk to the garage to the back door. It's one of those complicated things because the house sits up so high that we have to have the head height, you know, above the stair and the door, which and then it's, you know, you don't want it to look like a funeral home. I mean, it doesn't really want to follow the great, you know what I mean? I don't know. So I don't know what you guys think. About the, the other the other thing that I might want to add as well, there's not a whole lot of detail on like eat height and detail of the, it may be in the in the footnotes for the for the garage itself. 
Um, and like the Eid width and that sort of thing. I'm sort of digging through this and it may be part of it's on one page, parts on another. Yeah. It might be helpful to have you know, gotten a that. far. So I typically submit like wall sections with yeah, the yeah. final submittal so that you can see how. Great. You're, you're, we're just kind of making you aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. It's a, it's a very complete and conceptual. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I want as much feedback as possible. Right. So, yeah. So I, my comments are this, I'm okay with a lower level addition. Okay. I understand that that first level has been altered significantly to, to, to stretch that out within the parameters of the house. Um, I have less heartburn with that than changing the entire sleeping porch width. So, you know, when you're looking at the back of the house, I think it really changes the aesthetic perspective of that fabric. So if there's a way to do that, to scale that, so we, you know, when you look at, for example, drawing page 14, um, that south elevation, you're gonna see that that goes all the way across the back. I mean, you really lose that, that read of what that historic fabric is because the porch is shorter. Um, and if you're gonna rebuild it, rebuilding it in kind, I would be more inclined to say, okay, make the addition bigger, keep the porch as it is, and then put your addition behind that as well. And then it keeps that read from that self elevation consistent with what's been there for a significant amount of years. So just to confirm. That's just my opinion. No, no, but not, but right. yeah. Are you saying that you would prefer to see that second floor sleeping porch in its existing footprint? Is that right? So yeah, kind of the seven feet by how it lays into the into the the details of the home, and as we'd mentioned earlier, that you've got that soffit line that runs really smoothly, and then it dips in. It's a really elegant kind of look how that turns the corner. I will take sort of an opposite point of view. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, I'm going to give you kudos for trying to put the sleeping porch back, and I do agree. You're probably a lot of, you know, based on just having knowledge of having seen a lot of the sleeping porches in this neighborhood and the only true way to rebuild them is replace them usually and i do question even you know again there's something i don't know is the great of the lumber but a lot of them are hitting the end of their use for life now it seems but um, again we don't know that so uh, we're just assuming that's the case no so, no right i do i do agree with that on. i do, do agree with that mm -hmm. um but if if there is a case for rebuilding it though but the owner requesting it to be larger at least I feel that looking at the back of the house, there are some bright road sleeping porches that do take up the entire width of the back of the house. So I don't know that it's all that abnormal, though I agree there is clearly evidence that it was smaller. But the generally, the commission is not denied requests for additions, and at least they are keeping in the style. So I am at least okay with the fact that this is in the style of a sleeping porch had they just ordered the bigger kit in 1901 as opposed to the smaller kit. Um, so that would be my my view of that. However, the one thing is, is I know you're doing the tuck under detail. This home clearly has the extension of the eave line, and I I would prefer to see that just match the current gutter line and continue around it to line up with that as it would have been. But well, we agreed on that. We did agree on that, yes. Um, I have no other real problem with most of the submission, though. Okay. There's other people here. It looks like a fun project. <laughs> I was going to say, there's other opinions here. <laughs> Both <right. laughs> I wanted to pour the lock. First off, just commend you the completeness of at this stage good application. So, uh, and appreciate the attention to detail. Um, I, I personally, um, if we had really clear evidence of 100% about what exactly was there historically, um, I think we're trying to interpret a bit, it's my opinion, uh, and others may have more firm opinions about what was there and whatnot, but um, I, I feel like you're rebuilding in the spirit of, which for me is a, a, a good direction without direct indication of 100% what was there originally without some of the changes that have obviously happened. So um, I, I think that the uh, conceptual application as it is, is in the spirit of, of that original edition um, might be supportive at this stage. 
along with the, the e wine seeing that um, and some of the other comments but otherwise it looks like a pretty pretty great home you guys are building in the past have you done uh, a lot of walkways between garages and homes this talk for your homes <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, so I'm trying to think of when we didn't we, didn't we have one come up at Fairwood and Bryden not long ago? What what was there with the band one that was proposed? Um, but I, I don't know that that project's been forward or got final approval. That would be the only question. I was going to say, I think I've seen something like this in German Village somewhere. But, so but, 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 <laughs> exactly. Did, did the guidelines talk about that at all, kind of? No, not really. I don't think. Uh, I, I think it just wasn't included because this wasn't a typical thing. Sure. Historically, <laughs> but even something that you can do is, as Commissioner McCain was mentioning, if there are other ones that you know of in the neighborhood or if you see that they're there historically, providing photos that those could be helpful. Okay. Precedent. Even if you find sleeping porches that are. Yeah, cool with. <laughs> The extra cost and with, yeah, that could be helpful as well. I don't know. I, I think the I think the covered walkway thing is just the. Do you find it? Does it detract from the historic? Is it in keeping with the fabric? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I think it, so I, far it reads that well. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't I don't think it's distracting my attention on the original home. Right. I'm still drawn to the big chimneys in the main house. <laughs> They're staying. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. we have some good fireplaces yeah. to go with them. Appreciate uh, that you guys have kept with the spirit and again and characteristic of, of this home. So, um, application of the building. You have enough to go on? I think so. Do you guys have any issues with the materials? Are you guys accepting the hardy? What are we doing? The hardy lock siding. Smooth. Smooth. Windows are from the cut sheet. Uh, from the uh, roof list. Windows. Yeah, I've got oh, Marvin Ultimate demo hung. Are we allowed to do aluminum plaid, or do we have to do wood? Yes, you can. We yeah. do aluminum plaid. There's. You have the approval list. I do. I just never know <laughs> when you can use that. I think do you have to use wood on the original house, no. but then you can use. So every every. This, sometimes different. districts are different. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So it's good to check. The only it's thing is, is, like in German, they will allow the integrity, the elevate on the historic house or historic divisions. Okay. But they allow them even on the other ones on the other mm -hmm. side. I had one question that's kind of a small thing, but uh, uh, install new slate uh, tile at treads, risers, and sides of existing concrete stairs on the front. Does anybody have any issue with that? It's not something that's typically asked for. Is there like a laminate? Yeah, yeah the stairs are in bad shape, and instead of tearing them out, um, it's a good way to maybe preserve them a little longer. Yeah. Oh, they are bad. Yeah. Boy. Hi, there. Is there any other application like that in in Brighton? That there are these really similar mean. sort of concrete steps, but they're in a variety of conditions. You know, they were most likely just large slabs of stone, but just not like, like a tree. Yeah, in that regard, but uh, not, not, not really. I guess the the what what is the actual application itself? This describe that one more time. It's actually kind of like a. A tile, so there would be three tiles on each tread, and then so both the horizontal and the vertical. Very, very first. minimal to no mortar joint then on the tile. So, say that again. Is it minimal to no mortar joint? Yeah, it would be like you know close to eight inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that would probably be okay. I, I'm just curious if it would last because I mean you know you get a couple years of rain and salt and freezing. Oh, um, it's going to be more of an issue between her and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could go there. You have to talk to the contractor. Yes. Say, say that thousand dollars are voted towards new concrete steps. Yeah. It's, it's the I think particular tile. Seen them sort of coming off, and that's why you know, that's why I, they fall. Yeah. yeah. They in the butt. Uh -huh. Yeah. If if anything, that that 
least invasive yet appropriate, probably the most budget repair is a really high quality epoxy concrete repair kit, which with a good overcoating term. Yeah. Well, and some of that, I, I think I have to come back before you guys if we do a landscape plan, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, so we could do I'm holding off until that. that you can tackle with them. Yeah. And then because the way, I want to do, I don't want the front of the house, it has a very steep hill mm -hmm. that I see myself slipping down with a uh, gas bomb. And I like my feet. So I'm envisioning a retaining wall. I see. I took it one thing at a time. Let's go. Well, that's what I said. I will take pictures in. We're so good. Well, I will bring pictures in of my neighbors who have repeated the wall. You, you, may have a, you may have a neighbor Wait, that. One of the masons. Yeah. I, I was going to say, you, you definitively do have a neighbor that, you know, we, that there's an issue with the yeah. repeating. I, yeah, and you're I, on a corner with the alley, so you're going to have a vision try. There's going to be a vision triangle. Right, right. and I'm, I haven't even broke no, with that. Just hire a long guy. <laughs> well, but the, I'll be back with and then the stairs. I'm not committed on the stairs right now. Okay, that's yeah. the Then you come back. <laughs> yeah, if, the, if there's pieces of, by the way, your renovation that help to get you ahead, like, you know, I know there's long lead times on things like windows right now, mm -hmm. et cetera. But like, say you're going to do windows and you know definitively what the sizes are, you know, there's ways to expedite approvals on those kinds of things. Um, we get them through staff approvals, potentially breaking it up, you know, a landscape plan, depending on the thoroughness of it, may never have to come back to this meeting. It might be a staff approvable item, depending on the, you know. And that's, but I haven't even yeah. talked to people about it. You didn't hear any. It's just uh, part of it. That's it. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming in. Okay, so are the next submission, do we have to get it in tomorrow or do we have a week? You have a week. Okay. Next Thursday. Okay. I, well, don't, you know, I would say that even if you missed the deadline, still getting anything in to Connie, okay. even for. She doesn't, she wants to go like. Well, it rolls to the next meeting, but, you know. I mean, when I'm gone, yep. the new staff is not going to go, it, it will go to the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So don't encourage people to do that. On the right Just LSU. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other further items on the agenda? Okay. Old business. Is there any old business? Okay. Well, Having nothing further, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, the question is, all those in favor say aye. 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 aye.